Crockney, Frank Leahy, Aaron Barsegian, and now the feisty Lou Holtz have through the years taken the Notre Dame Fighting Irish to the glories of a national championship season. But not every year does old Notre Dame win overall. A less than perfect 1991 season can be turned around tonight with a victory over one of the nation's best teams. The third-ranked Florida Gators and their brilliant head coach Steve Spurrier are the champions of the mighty Southeastern Conference. They tore through the 1991 season, losing only once and ending the season with a huge victory over Florida State. Running back Eric Breck walked the walk and he talked the talk. Quarterback Shane Matthews was voted player of the year again in the Southeastern Conference. And the 72-yard strike to Harrison Houston sent the Florida Gators into the end zone and on to New Orleans and the Superdome, where tonight a sellout crowd will be in a frenzy for the U.S. f and Sugar Bowl. Superdome in New Orleans, where some 70 to 75,000 fans will be on hand tonight. It's Notre Dame against Florida in the 58th renewal of the U.S. f and Sugar Bowl. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Crowd has filed in. It has been party time in New Orleans, and there's no city like New Orleans for a party. They know how to do it, and it's carried over into the Superdome tonight. Partisan fans of both Notre Dame and the University of Florida ready to rip with the opening kickoff coming up in just a few moments. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deernorf, and I know I speak for all of us on our Monday Night Football team. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. We closed out our NFL season here a week ago with New Orleans and Atlanta, and here we are crossing over, if you will, from the NFL to college football, all the fun and the excitement. And one thing I find very interesting about tonight's game going in, Notre Dame would like to enhance their status in college football. They're unhappy with that 9-3. and three. They struggle at the closing of the season defensively, and Lou Holtz has taken over the defense himself. He's going to call the plays from the sidelines, and if you follow college football, you know anything about Florida, you know that Steve Spurrier is sort of a, a genius offensively, and he calls all the plays on the other side for Florida. So it's going to be mano-mano. It'd be fun to watch that tonight. Frank Holtz has to take over the defense because Gary Darnell left to join John Makovic's new staff at Texas, but uh, he's going to have his hands full because the Fighting Irish at the end of the season were terrible defensively. They allowed 35, 35, and then 42 points in their last three games. That's 112 points. If they play that way tonight, they're going to get killed because Florida averages 33 points a game. They have a great quarterback in Shane Matthews and a very, very balanced attack. Dan, you've got two teams clearly very excited to be in a primetime bowl game. And interestingly, I think a historic note, too, Notre Dame has met 126 different opponents through the years, but the Irish have never met Florida. Yeah, and you're right about being excited about being in a bowl game. It is the reason you go play college football for that opportunity to play on a program good enough to end up in a bowl game. At Notre Dame, it's almost a given. For Florida, this is a frustrated team that's here tonight. They won the SEC last year and didn't get to come to the Sugar Bowl because they were on probation. One last thing, you know, it's a blessing and a curse to play for Notre Dame. Obviously, you're one of the, you're in one of the country's great programs, but the other side of it is when it's a little bit of an off year like it is this year, and Florida having never played Notre Dame, like you say, let's be realistic. This Florida group would like to be the one to put Notre Dame's pelt on the wall and say, hey, we're the only Florida group of football players that ever beat Notre Dame and beat them good. All right, that's not going to be easily done because Florida is one of the most explosive offensive teams in the country today. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff. Notre Dame and Florida coming up in just a moment. Back live, Superdome in New Orleans and patrolling the sidelines for us tonight is Tim Brandt. Good evening, Tim. Good evening, Al. Well, you mentioned that Florida is favored. They are ranked number three in the nation. And so the master of motivation, Lou Holtz, he reached down into his bag of tricks now. Notre Dame came out and warmed up in their regular uniforms, but when they went back in just before coming out for this opening kickoff, they changed uniforms. Lou Holtz had brand new ones waiting for him in the locker room. They've got green numbers, green stockings. Notre Dame hadn't seen uniforms like that since 1981 when they were down here in the Sugar Bowl. Al? All right, Tim, so the bands departing the field. They have held the coin toss. The 
ceremonial aspect of this pageant this annual New Year's pageant is over and we are ready for the Gators and the Fighting Irish for Florida they have no chance now to win a national championship when the day dawned well had things broken their way had Miami lost tonight in the Orange Bowl against Nebraska and in conjunction with that had Washington lost to Michigan they would have had a shot now they have no shot but clearly they want to maintain at least that number three position in the AP poll that could work for them too uh, Al because I think it might loosen them up a little bit and it might also reflect the looseness of Steve Spurrier their coach uh, he, you know, he takes it serious but he doesn't take it too serious so he is a has a great offensive mind and it's going to be a duel between Spurrier and Lou Holtz uh, Spurrier calls the offensive plays for an explosive pass oriented team with a great quarterback young quarterback and Shane Matthews and to see what Lou Holtz will do defensively because in all honesty Dan uh, they have not been able to get to the passer all year long Notre Dame well if you broke down the Notre Dame football team you'd have to say that their offense was easily the best part of their team and it very very solid their kicking game very good as we look at Rick Meyer walking the sidelines but defensively is where Notre Dame was a huge disappointment but offensively led by that kid they are as good as any team in the country. We do not anticipate a low scoring game tonight as the Irish kick off. Hendricks sends it into the end zone and Larry Kennedy will come out with it and stumbles at the 15 yard line. And that's where the Florida Gators will set up shop in the Sugar Bowl. Shane Matthews, one of the finest quarterbacks in the country, suffered some ligament damage to his knee on December 1st in their last game against Florida State. Underwent arthroscopic surgery. He's back. We will see Rhett, their number one back, but later. We'll explain that in a moment. McClendon starts. McNabb is the other running back. Everett and Jackson are the wideouts. Dean is the tight end. And those guys up front have been together for all 11 games. So they've been steady and injury free and they've been terrific. Matthews to put it up throws underneath Willie McClendon makes the catch and he gets it out to the 24 yard line a little short of the first down. It'll be second and one Ridgely and Rod Smith make the stop as we take a look at the Irish defense. Carmilla McGill up front with Ridgely Young and McDonald. They've been unable to get the pressure holds once. DuBose is by far their leading tackler. He goes to the middle. Peterson moves up from second team to start with Cummington on the other side. Clark Carter, Smith, and Burris are in the Irish secondary. On second and one, here is McClendon, and he fights for a first down. Their number one running back, and there he is on the Gator sideline. Eric Rett missed some classes earlier in December. And so as his punishment, Spurrier is not going to start him tonight, but Steve isn't going to punish himself that much. Brett will be in before too long. I think it, uh, as long as he stays on the side, it'll, it'll be in direct relationship to what goes on in the field because he makes a difference when he's in there. So McClendon gets the start in the time being, and McClendon again is the ball carrier, but this time he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. And the tackle is made up front by McGill, number 89. It'll be second and 10. And Lou Holtz again calling the defenses tonight. Notre Dame only had 11 sacks over the course of the season. And they lost a couple of key players. They lost Brad Young for a while. They lost Eric Jones for the season against the Air Force. So they really are not a strong pass rushing team. Tough against the run, but they're going to have to figure some way to get to Shane Matthews or at least provide the coverage. Second and 10 from the 27-yard line. Matthews begins to stumble and then throws out of bounds, incomplete, intended for Alonzo Sullivan. It'll be third and 10. Hey, guys, we talked about uh, Notre Dame's new look, their uniforms, trying to pull a surprise. It's like Florida's making a fashion statement of their own here tonight. A lot of their guys wearing black socks, some of them pulled all the way up to the knee, and even if they've got white socks on it looks like some of the guys have taped them over with the black so uh, Steve Spurrier's squad not the only one uh, uh, I guess they're not to be outdone by the Fighting Irish when it comes to making a fashion play here tonight I'm, I'm not sure I'm into it though I'm <laughs> trips to the right on third and ten and Matthews throws and the pass is caught up at the 48 yard line for a first down the catch is made by Aubrey Hill, it's a 21-yard gain, and Matthews doesn't throw 
the prettiest ball in the world, but very often, as is the case here, it gets there right on the numbers. Notre Dame in his own. He throws the ball absolutely perfectly. And you're right, Al. It had a little do to it, but it got there. And Frank, you touched on it the first time Florida ran a play. The biggest problem with Notre Dame is their lack of a pass rush. They didn't even get off the line of scrimmage there. First and 10 at the 48. They run a little stunt, and still Matthews has all the time he needs. Rolling to his right, and then the secondary does its job. And clearly the Notre Dame secondary is the biggest part of their defensive unit in terms of keeping this team in the game tonight because up front you really can't expect them to get that much pressure against this Florida offensive line. It's really kind of surprising uh, uh, in your assessment Al which is absolutely right on that the Notre Dame secondary has as many interceptions as they have when you look across the, the back you see five two three one interception and they'll get a chance to make a play on the football tonight because Florida will put it in the air. And you can see there how the Irish fell apart the last three games. But, of course, a lot of that was due to the quality of their opposition. They played some good football teams. Second and ten. And Matthews again. The secondary does its job. He has to find a receiver underneath and does as Harrison Houston makes the catch at the 44-yard line of Notre Dame. But he's about two yards short of the first down. An eight-yard pickup. It'll be third and two. Again, keep in mind how much time Shane Matthews has. As all of this happens downfield, there's still no pressure on Matthews. He came out of the pocket. He didn't have to come out of the pocket. He just came out looking for somebody that might clear up on him, and he did. Frank, that's a perfect look at a pattern that you would rarely ever see in the NFL because an NFL quarterback doesn't get that much time to stand back there and let a receiver go up, back, up, and back again. Third and two, and they give it to McClendon. He goes to the short side of the field, picks up the first down, and takes it to the Notre Dame 26-yard line. Tackled by Burris. Billy McClendon, he can... He can play probably in the NFL coming up. He's a senior. He is a big man. He's 60, 223 pounds. You saw the quickness at the line of scrimmage. Now watch him. He makes a little hop to the inside. And great block on the outside by Dexter McNabb. And a little slip of a tackle there. And McClendon gets not only the first down, but he gets down close to the 25-yard line. He also gets a rest because Eric Rett is back in the game. So the punishment lasts about three minutes. And meanwhile, the Notre Dame defensive coordinator over there is getting a little tight. Rhett, number 33 in the game. They sent him into the pass pattern. Look at this time from Matthews. He throws. The catch is made at the 19 by Dexter oh. McNabb. He has all night to throw to Shane Matthews. Well, of course, my reference to the Notre Dame defensive coordinator is Lou Holtz, who, as we mentioned at the top of the show, has taken over everything. And you can call any defense you want. But when your defensive line isn't getting any farther into the backfield than that, Frank, uh, nothing's going to work. Well, he's going with a four-man rush, and they're not getting there. Troy Ridsey came close, but he was about four or five seconds late getting there. And they're covering with seven deep. They're trying to do it with a couple of linebackers and five defensive backs. And they're getting the coverage, but Shane is just picking them apart back there. Here's Eric Reck who led the conference in rushing. He takes it to the 15-yard line, and that should be enough for a first down. He is tackled by Smith. Rhett this season gained 1,109 yards and averaged five yards a carry to go with their great passing game. And this is really delighting a very pro-Florida crowd here in the Superdome. Guys, would you agree with me that having been here the last week and walking the streets of New Orleans, I'd, I'd say it's almost a 10-to-1 margin of of the orange and blue festooned uh, uh, followers of the Gators and you see of anybody following the fi fi fighting Irish. Well, we were on uh, the French Quarter, Dan. They might have been in a better part of town than Notre Dame fans. <laughs> First and 10 from the 15, and it's caught in the end zone. Whoa. Touchdown, Willie Jackson. Look out. Oh, Willie Jackson emerged late in the midseason for Florida and Steve Sprayer. And he's found a good one. He's 6'1", 194 pounds. Born on my birthday, August the 16th. I kind of like that. Stuck that up in the research. Those Leos are awfully good. Same year? Well, almost, Al. He <laughs> could have been my grandson, I guess. <laughs> but he has really turned into a fine receiver. And he's given the four offensive wide receiver look of Florida a new dimension. Arden Chazewski for the point after. And it takes them four minutes and 20 seconds to march down the field. 
85 yards, and they make it look very easy. Too easy. Another look at how St. Matthews is allowed to step up a totally unobstructed passing lane and just a relatively easy touchdown, an easy drive, and an easy Florida lead. The Gator band, and already they're very happy with 10.40 to go in the first quarter. The Gators march down the field after taking the opening kickoff. Lead 7 to nothing. Shazeski to kick off. Clint Johnson is back to receive for Notre Dame. And it's Johnson from the five. Finds a seam up the middle, but loses the ball. It's taken in midair by the Gators. They have it at the 39-yard line. Myrick Anderson is the recipient of the fumble. Just when it looked like something was going to break right for Notre Dame, Johnson has a, a nice opening upfield, but there is the strip. Look at the ball, never even hits the ground. Pulled right out of the air. Anderson gets it, and boy, already the Gators leading 7 to nothing and put Lou Holtz's club right up against the wall, and Rick Meyer hasn't even had a chance to take his offensive team out on the field yet. It was created by Dell Spears' hit. And so the Gators are right back in business. At the 39, they'll go to the air again, and why not? A ton of time for Matthews. He lost one, but it's picked off at the one-yard line by Willie Clark. And that's a very important play as the Irish get it right back. A flag is thrown after the hit. There may be a personal foul tacked on as well. And the Irish are going to get the ball near midfield. That ball was underthrown by Shane Matthews. That could have been just as easily six points as Willie Clark, who probably is a name you should keep track of in Notre Dame football. He's going to go to the offense oh, next year. First goal foul on Western Roughness. Defense, 15 yards, first down. Oh, uh, Notre Dame gets 15 plus after Willie Clark with the blazing speed around 4-3, makes the pickoff and brings it out close to midfield. Alonzo Sullivan there called on Florida. Now watch Willie Clark, number 32. A lot of great players. There's one named Johnny Lujak who wore that number. You know, that's almost like a counter punch in boxing. What looked like it was going to be a knockout punch ended up putting the, the hitter on the seat of his pants. That almost Notre Dame looking at 14 nothing has an excellent opportunity. They bounce off the ropes, yeah. take it at the 47, and the big fullback, Bettis, picks up six. He takes it to the 47-yard line, and let's take a look at the Notre Dame offense. Rick Meyer, he has a year of eligibility remaining. We'll get into it later. Nobody knows at this point whether he'll take it or not. He's had a fine season, and he has some very good running backs, Culver and Bettis, and we'll also see Brooks later. Smith and Dawson, the wideouts. Brown is the tight end. Nat Taylor, McGuire, Jerkovic, and that's the way he wants to pronounce, and Hall up front. Second and four, Meyer throws. It's caught at the 45-yard line by Derek Brown, the tight end, and he takes it to the 36 for a fighting Irish first down. And that is one big tight end, and a good one it is. An All-America, and he is about 6'6 and 250 pounds. Good blocker. He can move downfield, can take it deep if you want him to go deep. And a good-looking pro prospect, Derek Brown. You just take one look at him, guys. I mean, he might as well have NFL yeah, right across his chest. Yeah. Coach is slurping around the NFL looking at him. Notre Dame knows how to turn out the tight end from the 36-yard line. Meyer throws, and it's incomplete. Drills it over the middle, intended for Derrick Brown at the 23-yard line, and it'll be second down and 10. Let's take a look at the Gator defense, and uh, the offense gets so much of the attention. This defensive unit allows only 14 points a game. Culpepper, the left tackle 50, is an All-America. Then, as far as the linebackers are concerned, they have Anderson and Bartley on the outside. They're missing Polk, and so Robinson takes his place along with Miles inside, and the defensive backs. Will White is the key man there, and All-America last year, number two to free safety. Here is Bettis, and he gets taken down by Robinson on an open field tackle. A man taking Polk's place. Polk is a big loss, but the Gator coaching staff feels that Robinson is a guy who can really come in and fill the bill tonight for them. 
And when you talk to Steve Spurrier, he wasn't even concerned. And in the videos that we watched, Falk was such a key man defensively, the big play man for them all season defensively. And Steve Spurrier nonchalantly said, well, they won't miss him that much. Eddie Robinson is a fine football player. Made a big play there. Third and 10 at the 36-yard line. Big draw. Meyer throws, and that's incomplete at the 15. Irv Smith went up. He's the other tight end. And it's incomplete, but there is a flag down. I think it's going to be holding against Notre Dame. And I think Mickle was rushing from the backside and thought I saw him get dragged down. But it came on a third down play, so chances are that this will be declined by the Gators. Jim Springer is the referee. Culpepper is looking over toward the bench for some help. He said, do you, want, uh, do you want us to decline it? And I would uh, suspect they will. It makes it fourth down. Look at the inside move there at the top by Mickle, and he oh, is just offense. tackled. Penalty is declined. First down. But seeing that it brings up a punting situation, uh, it's declined by the Gators, and Notre Dame will kick away. And what looked like a good drive ended up fizzling. Irish stopped at the Gator 36. 8.44 left first quarter. Florida leads 7 to nothing. Jim Sexton to punt. And he figures to try to pooch it. Will White drops back deepest for Florida, though he's uh, really in a position where he's not expecting it to be kicked toward him. He stands at the 15. The kick is not angled to the extent that Sexton would have preferred, and thus it winds up in the end zone for a touchback. And instead of uh, pinning the Gators deep, it amounts to only a 16-yard net kick. And the Gators take it at the 20 with 8.38 remaining in the first quarter. 7 to nothing, Florida. Well, we talked about Tim Falk their outstanding inside linebacker. He was hurt in their last regular season game, and he and some of the other injured Gators are on the sideline. Willie McClendon is back in the game as the ace back in this set. Florida has it at the 20. They lead 7 to nothing, and it's McClendon who slips and then has to reverse direction and brings it back out to the 22-yard line for a gain of two. The well, whole stays in the four down linemen, the two linebackers, the five defensive backs, and I think... Uh, off what we saw a moment ago with Willie Clark's interception. He's just going to let Shane Matthews throw the ball, and whether he gets the pressure on him or not, he's going to look for the coverage, the interception that he's already got from Willie Clark. It's a dangerous way to go, but he also knows he does not have the people really to pressure Shane Matthews. He as much as told us that yesterday. Well, you saw something there you don't see often on AstroTurf. A guy almost slip and go down. And right is able to get it back to Matthews as he gets clobbered, and Matthews turns it into a first down. How about that as Anthony Peterson got so much penetration that time he nearly took the ball out of Rhett's hand, but instead it's a first down for Florida. What? The, that, this is an abstract play here. Eric Red is 33. There is the pitch, and that is an intentional handoff, and it's a pass play all the way. That's a design play, but nifty work here by Matthews tiptoeing down the sidelines to pick up that first down. That was a design play all the way. When it first happened, it looked like an accident. World's ugliest flea flicker. Yeah, that was. First down at the 30. They run the draw. This is a play Holt fears as Dexter McNabb picks up seven yards. Uh, Lou said of all the plays they run, they run the draw the best, and it's a seven-yard gain here. It'll make it second and three. Well, certainly the best player on the Notre Dame defense is Demetrius DuBose. Number 31, he's normally an outside linebacker. Lou Holtz moves him into the middle, and you see the power of Dexter McNabb right there as DuBose was in position to be the guy delivering the hit, and yet he's the one who took the brunt of it. This is a physical Florida football player. McNabb again, he picks up the first down. DuBose has already made five tackles. This time, Rod Smith makes the tackle, but the Gators moving again. 7-10 to go in the first quarter, and Florida number three in one pole and four in the other as the day begins leading 7 zip. And as we continue to watch this matchup between the Notre Dame front wall and the Florida line, Keep in mind that Notre Dame is pretty small across the front. I mean, 214, 240, 250, 265, 221, 202. In today's world of college football, that's a relatively small team. First and 10, Matthews has it knocked down. 
at the 40-yard line. It was a low throw, and Troy Ridgely was able to bat it down, second and 10, and let's get a word from Tim Brandt. Tim? All right, Al, Lou Holtz was telling me before the game that his club can't fall behind early because they can't play catch-up. Well, you guys have talked about the pressure that they aren't getting on Shane Matthews. They have a lot of concern there. But another concern is when the offense came off, you know that Rick Myers had a sore throat all week. He's not been able to call signals. Because it is so loud in here, the offensive players are not hearing him. So we'll keep an eye on that, too. Mm -hmm. Loud and clearly a pro Gator crowd. Second down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Matthews throws, and the catch is made at the 40-yard line by Trey Everett, his first catch. He takes it out to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down at about seven. Remember uh, what we talked about, about the size of these guys. Really, Demetrius DuBose is a good size linebacker. He's one of those rare guys on the Notre Dame team that's pretty darn big. He's 6'2", 234. You see how he flows to the outside, and oftentimes how you'll see that middle linebacker overrun a play he knew right when to stop. The back came to him, and he made the tackle. An excellent football player, Demetrius Dubo. Third and seven, Florida at its 45-yard line. Oh, look at that. Matthews all the time again. A juggling tack is made by Willie Jackson, and that's a first down as he is bumped out of bounds by Willie Clark at the 42 of the Irish. Uh, and again, Shane Matthews all the time in the world, and... If Steve Spurrier and Shane Matthews are just patient, they're going to have all the time they want to throw underneath. I think they may, might have a problem going deep because that's where I think Lou Holtz is gambling. He's going to take away the deep pass from him, take away the touchdown. He'll give him most anything under underneath, and he hopes that he'll be able to make the big play, the big interception. Well, there's a flawed scheme right there if they think Demetrius Dubose, a linebacker, is going to be able to run with Willie Jackson. That, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen all night. Here's Rhett to the outside. He gets turned back in, but still is able to lunge forward, get to the 36-yard line, and that's a pickup of five. This year in the Southeastern Conference, the Gators averaged better than 308 yards a game passing. They scored almost 33 a game. Defensively, they allowed only 100 yards per game on the ground, and they led the conference in net punting, and it's the first official SEC title in 58 years for the Gators. And we can't get it all up there because St. Matthews also, he threw for 28 touchdowns. They averaged almost 150 yards rushing a game, and this is a dynamite offensive team that Steve Spurrier's put together. Second and four, here's the draw again, and Rett picked up a first down. Eric Rett bounced out of bounds by Smith and Clark at the 27 with 5.08 to go in the quarter, and the Gators on top 7-0. Steve Spurrier was talking about the... He just kind of lucked in there, Eric Red, because he was highly recruited by F FSU, Florida State University, and then he had a knee problem in his senior year, and they kind of backed off a little bit, and he was able to bring him in, and he's turned into a, a great asset, over a thousand yards this season, and a very acrobatic runner. If you're watching the course of the night, you just watch how he bounces around out there. From the 27-yard line. Off the play fake, Matthews going deep and incomplete, intended for Everett at the two-yard line. It'll very, well have been, ten. very well have been picked off by Tom Carter. They're just taking away the deep, or trying to, with the zone defense. That's Carter, number 13, on the outside. He doesn't go for the little hitch. He drops into his zone right where he should be, and that was one he well could have caught. And it's really a pass that Matthews should not have thrown because he has time to look from one to two to three, maybe to four. He's How about five. Yeah. He's got plenty of time to survey the field. Second Gator drive as on second and ten. It's caught at the nine yard line. That's a first down by a leaping Willie Jackson. And his forward progress will make it first and goal. He's tackled by Ron Smith. Well, Notre Dame blitzed that time up the middle, and it didn't get them anywhere. You saw Justin Goheen come up the middle. He was picked up. This is a Florida offensive team that, to me, it seems to be without weakness. Excellent play up front, a fine quarterback, good running backs, and great receivers. I'll tell you, they're looking around the SEC at Willie Jackson. He's a redshirt sophomore. You're going to see a lot of him. 51 receptions into the night. He just exploded. On to the Florida scene in the second half of the season. Here's Rhett turning it in, and it's a minimal gain, if any. It'll be second down and goal as Covington and McDonald make the stop. If you're just joining us, the Gators took the opening kickoff and marched 85 yards. They got the ball back on a 
fumble kickoff return, but were intercepted in turn by Notre Dame. Irish bogged down, and now the Gators on their second long drive of the evening and 157 yards for Florida to 17 for the Irish, and the score is 7 up. Steve Spurrier won the Heisman in 1966 and was most valuable player the 1967 Sugar Bowl. Second down and goal at the nine-yard line. And oh. Jackson this time almost makes a leaping one-handed oh. catch. Boy, in the old days of Stickham, he might have had that. Put Shane <laughs> say should have had it. If he'd have been wearing Fred Bolitnikoff's hand, he would have caught that pass. It would have stuck to it. What? He made an <laughs> unbelievable effort, and he almost came down with what most certainly would have been the catch of the night. Look at that. He had it by the tip. Oh, that's Almost pretty. got it back in. Good work, guys. That's a great catch. That's beautiful. Jackson tonight has already caught three balls to 47 yards. Third and goal at the nine. Everybody into the pattern. Well, this Look at this. Matthews, he can survey everything. And yet, uh, a good job done by Notre Dame secondary because nobody got open, and it'll make it fourth down and goal. Now, there's only a two-man rush at that time. I, you know, I, I don't really recall seeing much anything quite like this, but uh, we, Lou Holtz has decided to just, he's going to cover the receivers downfield, thinking that he can't get to Shane Matthews. And quite frankly, it's worked pretty well for him. He's got an interception already, should have had another one. And that time, Shane Matthews, with all the time in the world, with only the two-man rush, still have no place to put it. 26 yard field goal attempt for Arden Shazewski. And he splits the upright at the Superdome in New Orleans where the first quarter of the USF&G Sugar Bowl has been totally dominated by the Gators of Florida. A look at Bourbon Street. Ten to nothing, Gators. Six left in the first quarter in the Sugar Bowl, 10 to nothing Florida. Here's a reminder another season of the Professional Bowlers Tour begins on ABC a week from Saturday. The AC Delco Classic, Torrance, California is the site. Three Eastern and Pacific and two Central time. The Pro Bowlers Tour with Krishenko and Bo Burton coming your way a week from Saturday. Rick Meyer ready to get his offense back on the field and try to get him in gear. They're down 10 to nothing. Florida kicks off. Chazeski puts it in the air. This is Clint Johnson who fumbled the last kickoff return. And this time another good return. He packs the ball in, takes it out to the 48-yard line from the two. Well, if ever a team was desperate for something to ignite them, it's Notre Dame, and maybe they get it from Johnson. Excellent blocking up front. He's got dangerous speed, but notice all successful return men go straight up the field. On a kickoff return, when you start going lateral, you are not going to get anywhere. To get there, go straight up the field. That's exactly what Johnson did that time. Rick Meyer and the Irish, and everybody moved except the center didn't snap the ball. Well, you know, we heard Tim Brandt say earlier about the sore throat of Rick Meyer another one of the problems is it is that Rick even when his throat is sound has a has a high-pitched voice Illegal procedure snap violation offense five yards and Lou Holtz told us yesterday that he's very concerned about Rick Meyer's ability to audible and to be heard and that's the old double clutch when you're a center you can't snap it and then put it back and that's what Gene McGuire tried to do that time but it's going to be a strain for Meyer to be heard tonight one because of his voice two because of the cold first and 15 he hands it to the big fullback Bettis Jerome Bettis who uh, weighs around 247 pounds is tackled by Brad Culpepper number 50 Bettis uh, has emerged as their key man out of the backfield they also have Rodney Culver and uh, as well Tony Brooks the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's Brad Culpepper, number 50 in the middle. And we talked to him yesterday. And he said, boy, this is really something I'm looking forward to. The biggest line I've seen all year, the biggest backs I've seen all year. All I can hope for is to get there, hang on, and wait for help. Second and 11. Meyer, after trying to set up the screen, throws underneath. 
And this is Tony Smith, who is their leading receiver. He caught 42 during the regular season, but he is about four yards short of the first down at the Gator 45-yard line. I don't know whether this is a design play or not, but this ball was caught almost on the line of scrimmage. Here's Smith's coming right down the line of scrimmage. And I think just because of the defense, he didn't take it upfield at all. And so consequently, he comes up short of the first down. Third and four at the 45. 2.15 to go. First quarter, 10-0 Florida. Gators show blitz. Here they come. Notre Dame runs the draw. And taking it to the 43-yard line is Rodney Culver, but he is a little short of the first down. It'll be fourth and one. Good, strong running by Culver. He broke three or four tackles. And let's take a look at Brad Culpepper, the... Consensus All-American, perhaps more importantly, a scholastic All-American this year. Playing off the block, fighting back, getting in on the tackle, and dropping Culver short of the first down, and Notre Dame will go. They will, they're down 10 to nothing. They, they figure hey, defensively they're going to give up a lot of points. They just have to get into a shootout and score more than Florida. If they're going to win, they have to win offensively. they got to go for it. Straight T formation here, and they give it to Bettis. Flags all over the joint. For the moment, he gets the first down to the 39-yard line, but Mahalko, number 35, who was lined up in the Notre Dame backfield, may have jumped. Yeah, this may be a motion against Notre Dame. Let's see. One ball. There we go, procedure. Offense. Yeah. Go. What a killer. What a killer. And I think you, at, at this point, you, you go ahead and punt away now. There's no question about that. And they'll bring the punting team on, I'm quite sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Frank. They really don't have much of a choice here. You, you can't turn it over at, at midfield because you failed on a six-yard attempt for a first down. When it's one yard, that's, uh, you know, the odds are much more in your favor. They don't have much of a choice but to kick it. Myers' voice problem might be a major problem. We've seen this about three jumps already tonight, and that could be coming and directly related to Rick Meyer, just not communicating. Greg Hendrick oh. is able to field... The snap on a bounce and get it away. Jackson was back there, but he lets it bounce at the 16-yard line. And the Irish down it at the 17. And so the Gators, who have been next to unstoppable, with 50 seconds left, take over with a 10 to nothing lead at their own 17-yard line. A good bounce, an AstroTurf bounce. On a grass field, that ball may have skittered off to one side or the other, but... As a center, AstroTurf is your best friend when you're making a long snap. When it hits the ground, it normally bounces through. Peach Bowl to the East Carolina ends a great year. They beat NC State by three. In a pick'em game, Cal rips Clemson by 24. In the Hall of Fame game in Tampa, Syracuse knocks off Ohio State 24 to 17. What a resurgence out on the West Coast, huh? Mm-hmm. Here is McClendon reversing direction and picking up two up to the 19-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. In other games today, in case you're just getting home, we've been out on the road or wherever, in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, uh, played in lousy weather. Florida State beats Texas A&M 10-2. The Nittany Lions roll over Tennessee in the Fiesta Bowl, 42-17, and I'll let Dan do the last one. <laughs> well, Washington uh, makes a strong statement that they might be the best team in the nation by just dominating a, a very good Michigan team and congratulations to, to Don James and the Huskies. An excellent football team. James who recruited you on that end. Second and eight and McNabb takes the wraparound give and gets it up to the 22 yard line as the first quarter expires. Yeah, it's always bittersweet for me to watch Washington play Michigan. Don James recruited me to go to Ann Arbor. Mainly bitter. Yeah. <laughs> End of the first quarter, 10 nothing Gators. The USF&G Sugar Bowl. Brought to you by HBO. Simply the best. And by Chevrolet. The heartbeat of America. The cars more people depend on. Welcome back to the... Superdome where the Gators lead the Irish 10 nothing. I'm with Shane Matthews mom and dad Peggy and Bill Bill your assessment of Shane's performance in that first quarter well, I think he did a good job the offensive line has given him a heck of a long time to throw the football except one time when he unthrew his receiver down here on about the five yard line but otherwise I think the offense is doing a super job and so is the defense now you're the high school coach at Pascula High School in, in Mississippi you were Shane's coach were you harder on him than everybody else 
Yeah, I was kind of hard on him than anybody else, but he responded to our challenge, and they did a good job for us. Thanks for joining us. Happy New Year to you guys. Thank you. Back up to you, gentlemen. All right, on third and five, here is Matthews with his receivers covered, and he picks up a first down up at the 45-yard line as Willie Clark is there to make the tackle. And Shane Matthews, a guy who was questionable in mid-December because he had undergone that arthroscopic knee surgery is showing uh, enough mobility tonight. December 3rd, Al. That's not that long ago, as you well know, uh, with any kind of arthroscopic surgery. But he said he's a little tender. He didn't think it would inhibit him in any way. We've seen him pull it down twice now and ramble for first down. So uh, he's apparently all right. Look That's at those. Awfully quick to come back. Though. Look at those numbers and guess who's winning? Hmm. You'd be right. 10 to nothing Gators. First and 10 at the 42. Matthews. And they finally get to him. It took a number of seconds, but they finally are able to dump him as Carmela McGill is given credit for the sack back at the 35 yard line. Again, that's just good coverage downfield as Notre Dame continues with whatever they decided they were going to do, and that is a four-man rush, and that's about it. Maybe once every five plays or so, they'll bring a linebacker. But he has all the time in the world to throw it, and that was just good coverage with the Notre Dame zone defense deep downfield. Second and 16, I'll tell you that Lou Holtz could wear out a couple of pedometers in the course of a game. Up and down and back and forth. How about that guy that carries the wires and runs along with him? <laughs> yeah. He needs a sub. The catch is made by Jackson at the 42. And he, with some nifty footwork, just squeezes an extra yard out of it to the 41-yard line. Matthews took a hit after the pass and is a little slow and moving back upfield. Well, I'll tell you, that was a beautifully thrown pass to Willie Jackson. Man. I know they have worked on this time and time again because that ball was thrown before Jackson made his break. Uh, underneath the zone, and that's where they should be hitting because Notre Dame is going to take anything big away from them. But that was beautifully thrown. You know, this Florida team has a galaxy of receivers. They have them everywhere. First and 10 at the 41-yard line, and Rhett gets popped in the backfield. That's a loss of a yard, maybe two. At the 43-yard line, Devon McDonald, the senior from Patterson, New Jersey, the defensive end, makes the hit. Interesting to watch this as Lou Holtz, the old Fox, is trying to do something with the defense tonight that is really, really a gambling type of thing. He's going to let Shane throw that football. He's going to take away anything deep. And he's going to let him throw it underneath, and he's going to look for the big play. The big play, of course, the, inter the interception. Second and 12 at the 43. Did you call him an old fox or an old ox? Oh, I've known Lou for so many years. You have, Al. He's, he's a cagey guy. Football, he's... delivery, offense, right yard. And this young man, I tell you, he is, he's rising in the world of collegiate coaching very imaginative and I, <laughs> I think it's gonna be kind of interesting to watch what he does tonight if Shane Matthews continues as on the rate he's going to go the guy's record may be in jeopardy for the Sugar Bowl and this is him he you know, set that record back in 1967 352 yards and Shane I got a feeling he's gonna be very close to it before this night's over we saw number one Miami leading 13 to nothing at home in the Orange Bowl against Nebraska second and 17 Matthews throws. Jackson makes another catch, and it's enough for a first down. He's bounced out of bounds by Willie Clark at the 27-yard line. Well, you can't give up that kind of a pass when you're in a playing a deep zone. And there was coverage. It was all inside. But again, a good delivery by Shane Matthews. And Willie Jackson is looking great. That's just poor coverage. Though. That was his own defense. Somebody had to be in that that zone and they just weren't. Willie Jackson already five catches and this game is not 18 minutes old at this point. 12.28 to go in the half. 10 nothing Gators. Matthews on first and 10. Matthews throwing and it is knocked down at the goal line. The pass intended for Harrison Houston and Tom Carter got back there to knock it down. A man who had five interceptions during the regular season. 
I know one thing for sure. Lou Holtz has to figure out a way to get somebody in the vicinity of Shane Matthews. They can't count on this kind of coverage every play. And Tom Carter, their best corner, gets back in there and almost does intercept the pass. But they are going to have to start sending six and seven people after Matthews. You know you got a quarterback who had knee surgery. His mobility is down some. If you're going to lose a football game, lose it aggressively. Lose it gambling, going after the guy. Another four-man rush, and they don't even get close. Second and ten. Alonzo Sullivan to the 18-yard line, and they've been running those little stunts, and those are doing uh, no good at all. All the time in the world again for Shane Matthews. Uh, that's where they wanted him to go in the last play. He tried to take it deep into the end zone, and he almost had it intercepted as Lou Holtz really was kind of luring him into the trap to throw another deep pass for an interception. But they come right back with the same pattern, and they go to Sullivan underneath, and he's putting up some major numbers early in this game. Third and one. At the 18-yard line. Derek Rett picks up the first down. He is tackled at the 13-yard line by Rod Smith. And the Gators, at least for the Notre Dame defense, unstoppable tonight. Boy, how about the body lean Rett uses when he runs? Steve Spurrier told us yesterday that when we have team scrimmages, I have to hold him out sometimes because he hurts our guys. That uh, normally during a scrimmage, uh, one or two of our defensive guys end up having to come out of there because they either banged up a shoulder or a neck trying to collide with Eric Brett. He is a powerful back. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Here's the draw. Here is Rhett. He gets to the 7-yard line. Young makes the tackle with 11.15 to go in the first half. Well, I'll tell you, when they can move it as easy as they have in the air and on the ground, you always get the feeling maybe they should go back in there and put those old uniforms on. <laughs> they got their hands full tonight. Brian Young comes out of the game, needed an equipment change, so he is still up front by Roush. It's second down and four, and Matthews is going to take a timeout. Timeout Gators, and that's about the only way Florida has been stopped tonight. 10.44 left in the half. 10-0 Gators. How about a little cruise down the Mississippi River in New Orleans? I might uh, get on the Delta Queen and take it home. I'll just sail right up the Mississippi. And what a beautiful town New Orleans is, and full of fun people. And we've had a great week. Second and four, Matthews throws. Before we get mail, I think the Delta Queen is up in Cincinnati. It's the, what is it, the Natchez down here? Oh, they've got, well, they come and they go. The Delta Queen That's comes true. down here. It's a right. Cajun Queen. Yeah, yeah looking out the window of our hotel, watching, you know, as the surge of the tide comes in and, and out, and you watch that ferry come across the, the river. It's really fascinating. I think you've got three or four of the old paddle wheelers that fly the Mississippi and go all the way from... St. Louis all the way down here. It's mm -hmm. a it's a, like a, a week or a 10 day trip. Mm -hmm. Totally very beautiful. Third down and four at the eight yard line. Gators on top 10 to nothing. Matthews. And that's incomplete. He tried to get it into the corner of the end zone to Trey Everett, but he was covered as Notre Dame keeps dropping everybody back and Willie Clark threw out of the coverage. What yeah. happened to Matthews here is that some of his receivers, once they got back in the end zone, maybe didn't work as hard as they could have to get open. Some of them got stationary on that back line, and you have got to move to to find uh, you know find a lane back to your quarterback so we can well, see it. Dan, maybe they never had that much time to make the maneuvers <laughs> that they have tonight. Maybe they just assumed the play was over. Huh? 24-yard field goal for Szewski. And the Irish are very lucky. They are only down 13 to nothing with 10.29 left in the half. It could have been a lot worse. Saturday, Wide World of Sports, Diet Coke and NutraSweet present the U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Not only the national championships, but Olympic berths are at stake in this event in Orlando, Florida. Daytime coverage on Saturday. Primetime coverage on Saturday night. You've got Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan and Christy Yamaguchi all skating for Olympic first at 9 Eastern and 8 Central Saturday night, a week from Saturday night. And you, of course, will be there, Al. We'll be riveted. Al's our finger skating guy. Anything on ice, 
You got it. Sticks, pucks. <laughs> How, true. How true that is. At the 15-yard line, Rodney Culver brings it back up to the 37. And Notre Dame will take over there. It'll be first and 10. Lou Holst is... Uh, Speaking of ice, his defense has been ice cold tonight, but they have been able to at least hold off the last two Florida drives at the end, and uh, thus they have resulted in simply field goals for the Gators, and it's 13 to nothing, and the Irish remain in the game. At the 36-yard line, Meyer throws, and the catch is made, and Tony Smith would have been better served dropping the ball because Kennedy is there to tackle him for a loss. You know, and... Lou Holtz is very honest and very candid when he tells you that this is not a catch-up football team he has. He does not have Rocket Ishmael this year. The nearest thing he has is Tony Smith. But, I mean, how many times are you going to have a Rocket? Uh, when they get way down, it's going to be a long struggle because they do not have the big play potential they have had in recent years. Second and 12 from the 34-yard line. Here is Culver, and he slips on the turf. It'll be third and long. Did you notice how Culver has his shoes taped and the tape goes all the way underneath his shoe and covers up some of his cleats? And, you know, you're losing a lot of your traction, a certain percentage of it there, when you continue that tape underneath your shoe. And, you know, you just don't see people slipping on AstroTurf. And that was the situation there. I think Rodney Culver has got to get that tape off the sole of his shoe. They're exactly on. Third and 14, and Meyer throws a bullet. Smith makes the catch and has enough for a first down as he gets it to the Gator 49-yard line, tackled by Bartley. Oh, Meyer showing a strong arm there. That was a deep out pattern that took a lot of strength. Meyer this time has a lot of time. Steps up, fires, drills one, and that's big time stuff as Tony Smith Picks up additional yardage, and Notre Dame gets inside Florida territory. First and 10 at the 49, 8.55 to go in the half, 13-0 Florida. Meyer, now keep in mind, his voice is a little weak. He tried to change it. Fakes right, throws left, catch is made at the 40-yard line by Lake Dawson, and he surges forward inside the 40 and is very close to a first down, and a little pushing and shoving ensues. Lake Dawson has been an up-and-comer for Notre Dame. Smith is their leading receiver, and Dawson was second on the team with 24 catches during the regular year. A lot of the Fighting Irish fans would have preferred Notre Dame to throw a little bit more than they did this season. Well, I think the quarterback would have, frankly, but he has kind of subordinated his talent to some 22, 24 passes a game when a lot of teams with a Rick Meyer and his arm might have been putting that ball up 35 or 40 times. You know, we were talking about Meyer's voice and how it doesn't carry. We got a good look there, I think, at Jerome Bettis at fullback who had to turn around and say, tell huh? his tailback what was being called. Watch Bettis right here and watch how he has to turn around and relay the call. See, there's Meyer making the audible and Bettis turns around to Culver to tell him what's happening and when your voice doesn't carry even three or four yards away that's that's a good sign that you are having a major problem it's a first down after the measurement at the 39 yard line 820 to go in the half 13 to nothing in favor of the Gators and it's actually it is not a first down the down marker signaled first down it is second and inches and oh. Myers throws is enough for a first down and a lot more. In fact, it's enough for a touchdown to Dawson. I think that was an automatic by Meyer. It looked as though he changed it. Dawson with single coverage. And the victim is Larry Kennedy. I don't know what he was doing. He obviously had to be a man, man for man situation and he just did not provide the coverage. Well Frank that's the risk of Florida playing that eight man front in essence with only two corners and one safety. Your DBs when there are only three of them are put in a vulnerable position. But Larry Kennedy the defensive back just stood and looked across the line of scrimmage as Dawson raced by him. There's no chance for the point after. Any help. 
Easy six. Kennedy acted like he was sure it was going to be just a little hit. He was wrong. Thankfully. The inevitable question. There's been talk about Rick coming out to the National Football League. He says he will make that decision after this year. Tell us about the process. Well, it has taken a lot of time, and uh, we're just trying to sort out the pieces right now. It's like a puzzle, and, and you can't really see what the whole picture is until you get all the pieces. So we're just taking some time to take a look at it, and I think in a couple weeks he should have a, an idea of what he's going to do. Right now he doesn't know. Obviously you're helping him with the research. How about his throat in this game? Has that been a factor, do you think? You've talked to him. Yes, he's had a little bit of a sore throat. I think practicing in the rain a couple days ago has caused him a little bit of a problem, but he's, he said today he felt real good. Al. All right, Tim Hendricks' kick is taken from the 19 back up to the 27 by Larry Kennedy. You heard uh, Ken Meyer mention that it may take a couple of weeks for Rick to make his decision. That's not going to sit very well with Lou Holtz. And Hendrick, who was hurt in the Tennessee game, is injured again. He's one of the finest kickers in the country, and this will be a big loss. And clearly we'll get a report on his condition as soon as we can. On the Meyer story, though, when we asked Lou Holtz about Meyer, he said, I want a decision soon. And he mentioned, like, January 3rd. Yeah, and there is going to be a problem there because it affects Holtz's recruiting and how hard he goes out looking for a quarterback. It's, it's going to be determined by whether or not Myra comes back, but it's not going to come that quick. As we talked to his father yesterday, it's going to be at least a couple weeks. It might be a month. First down from the 28, set up the screen, and McClendon avoids the first man, but not the second as he is taken down at the 25. Hendrick was hurt in the Tennessee game. He had a field goal block, run back for a touchdown, and they had a chance to win that game at the end and had to go to a backup kicker who missed the kick. And here he is, and he injures himself again. And you can see it. He looked like oh. he almost stepped on the foot. Did he step on the foot of his own man? Yeah, but he's obviously got oh. a brace on there, and something man. locked or caught on him. Whew. That's painful. That's You know that your leg is sore when that's all it takes to come up lame. Mm -hmm. Second and 13. Oh, my Lord, will you look at that? Matthews. Well, and then he goes down. Everybody's covered, and Matthews, and I think his mobility is clearly quite limited now well, as he decides to go down to the 16-yard line. I think Matthews really caught oh, that knee. Yeah. But, but he, the last time he carried the football for the first down, ran down the sidelines for the first down, he lipped back to the huddle after that. So he's got a very sore knee. But again, Notre Dame thinking, only coverage, no pass rush. Two men at the line of scrimmage. Nine guys back in his own defense. And Shane has five, six, seven, eight seconds. Still no one is open, and he has to go down to protect that knee. Third and 21 from the 16. Here's a little screen. McClendon makes the catch at the 16. And McClendon gets it up to the 27-yard line. He's still considerably shy of the first down. And the Gators will have to punt as Matthews comes limping off. And I'll tell you, that's an unlikely call against that kind of a defense. A conservative one, indeed. You Miami number one leading yep. at the half, 13-0 at the Orange Bowl. And here, Florida, third in one pole, fourth in the other, leading Notre Dame 13-7. And as hard as this seemed to believe just 10 minutes ago, Notre Dame's going to get the football back with a chance to take the lead before halftime, a half where they have really been physically dominated by Florida. Shane Edge is a freshman, one of the best kickers in the nation this year. 43.3 is average. This was not an artistic kick, but it will look pretty good on the stat sheet when it's uh, finally finished bouncing and rolling out of bounds. Down at the 27-yard line, a 46-yard boot for Edge. 5.35 to go in the half. Superdome, New Orleans, the Sugar Bowl, 13-7, Gators. Hemtrick, he said, as you guys pointed out, he wasn't hit, the knee just popped out on him. He's going to try to limp around, trying to get it loose. He says he is still going to try to kick, but he's in a lot of pain. He did not have surgery after he injured originally on the, after the Tennessee game, but he will have it looked at and scoped after the season. And as we pointed out, it's uh, already been a critical loss in that game against Tennessee when Hendrick couldn't kick at the end. Who knows tonight? At the 27-yard line on first down for the Irish, it is Rodney Culver who picks up four before he is stopped by Brad Culpepper. And all of a sudden, what looked like a certain laugher for Florida has begun to tighten up on them here a little bit at the 
closing minutes of the first half. We're down to just a little bit over five minutes left in the first half, and Notre Dame has started to come alive offensively. And we see Tony Brooks for the first time in the game, number 40. He gained almost 900 yards this season. He takes the little toss, and Tony Brooks picks up the first down, taking it up to the 40-yard line. Stopped by Athesians, Bartley and Larry Kennedy. We'll go right back to the very top of the game when Lou Holtz said he was going to let his defensive players do what they could do. They're not good pass rushers, so he has dropped them off into coverage, and it is a very dangerous thing he has done, but Florida has been unable to take advantage of it. They've only got it into the end zone one time, even with all the time in the world to throw the football. So it's paying off. A gamble by Lou Holtz. First and ten from the 40-yard line. My nearly sacked then he is at the 28 yard line by Bill Gunther Bill Gunther is actually starting in place of Harvey Thomas the talented defensive end who broke his leg on a moped accident a couple weeks ago and he just comes in around the corner and Meyer just took too long and didn't sense Gunther coming and didn't step up to get away from it Things were solid up in the middle. You see absolutely no penetration at all, but then Gunter comes around from the outside and makes a big play for the Gators. And McCoy finishes him off, though Gunter should get credit for the whole sack, at least a half. Meyer flings it over the middle. Is the catch made at the 46? It is... Well, let's see. No signal yet from the official. They are saying it is a catch by Tony Smith. Well, let's go to the replay and we fortunately do not have to oh. be concerned with that replay booth oh. here tonight. Tony Smith made the oh. fine effort at around the 45-yard line. Let's take a, a look at it, even though it's not going to change. That's kind of jarring for us. <laughs> but a fine effort by Tony Smith, yep. the junior wide receiver. Third down and five from the 46-yard line, and Meyer picks up the first down as he takes it to the 46 of the Gators. Del Spear makes the tackle, and the Irish down by six are on the move with 3.15 to go in the half. And yeah, that's big time stuff. You were down back at your own 25 yard line, second down, and about 22 to go. And Myra gets a 16, 17 yard completion, and then he gets the first down on his own. Finish that off. Uh, there's Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator of the Florida Gators, setting in his signals. and. Rick Meyer that time. How about it for a quarterback? Put the old shoulder down and took on Spear. At the 46-yard line, Darren Nickel, the defensive right end, is back on the bench, and Kevin Carter takes his place. And Meyer off. has it picked off by Larry Kennedy, who brings it back to the 30-yard line. Uh, Myra saw William Pollard deep, wide open. Tried to throw it a little late and threw it right into the hands of Larry Kennedy, who was actually beaten by Pollard, but Meyer was late getting it there. Bad throw. But Notre Dame on the move. Meyer throws it right in the hands of Larry Kennedy. Rolls out. He gets a little bit of a problem. At that moment, Pollard was open. There's Pollard, number 82. He was in between the zone, but... Meyer waited too long, and Kennedy comes up with the turnover. Gators get it back at the 30, 2.43 to go. Florida up 13 to 7. The ace back here is Dexter McNabb, and he picks up a couple up to the 32-yard line. Gators have two timeouts at their disposal. Florida Gators. Ten and one during the regular season. The one was a loss at Syracuse and the only game they played on turf and indoors this year. Similar circumstances tonight at the Superdome. A college program that have done their part in stocking the NFL. Getting it back from McNabb is Matthews and then he goes deep and there is contact but it is incidental contact as Alonzo Sullivan Bumps into Willie Clark. No flag, simply a long, incomplete pass. Third down and eight. And the whole defensive philosophy working once again. Take away the deep thing. There was a possibility, had that ball been thrown well to Alonzo Sullivan, he was streaking. Now, he picks up deep coverage, man-for-man -man coverage, Willie Clark. But Willie Clark, again, we talked about him earlier. 4-3 speed, will probably be on offense next year. Right with 
Alonzo Sullivan and in effect Shane Matthews had to throw it away. Third and eight, 159 to go in the first half. And Matthews has to spend a timeout here. Not a very judicious use of a timeout. It's the second time he brought him up to the line and had to call a timeout. 159 to go in the half. One fifty-nine remaining. We're in the first half. Steve Spurrier kind of shaking his head. His team has pretty much dominated, yet they lead by only six, and they're facing a third down and eight at the 32-yard line. Matthews picks up the first down on the pass to the 48 to Willie Jackson. That's a half dozen catches for him tonight. Tackled by Smith, and the Gators have just one timeout remaining. Willie Jackson goes and gets the football, doesn't he? Uh, I mean, this guy doesn't wait for a ball to just be between the numbers to be catchable. This guy will go get it up, down, low, behind, in front. Uh, he's, he's showing the nation something tonight. Kid who stayed at home from Gainesville. And only a sophomore. Mm -hmm. and good size, too. Right up there. 6'1", 190 pounder. Uh, first down. Passes made. This time it's Alonzo Sullivan, and he steps out of bounds at the 43 yard line to conserve some clock with 137 left. I tell you, this is what the Notre Dame defense will give you. And now they are starting to patiently take it instead of trying to take it deep. They have taken away the deep thing on the outside. They've taken it away in the middle, but you can get 8 10. You can get the hits to the outside. And if Florida is patient, they're going to. Not put up a whole lot of numbers, but they're going to keep the ball all night. And they should be able to win the football game. Second and two, right on a draw. That's a first down. He takes it to the 36-yard line, and the clock momentarily stops for the first down with 131 left in the half. DuBose in on the hit, and DuBose also shaken up. We talked about <laughs> We passed along what Steve Spurrier told us about Eric Rett, how he hurt people, and... He sent people out when they tackled him. There's a good look at it. DeBose heads out after colliding with Rhett. Pete Bursich comes in to take his place. Here's Sullivan again. And Sullivan for a gain down to the 20-yard line and another first down. And keep in mind, this is college football. The clock stops when you pick up first down yardage, unlike the NFL. And Demetrius DeBose appears to be much worse for the wear over on the sideline. And that, that would be a colossal loss for Lou Holtz's defensive unit, their best player. This is going to be a total bend defensive night for Notre Dame, and Florida now starting to take advantage of getting get him come on the blitz, and Matthews' pass is out of bounds, intended for Willie Jackson at the two-yard line, covered by Smith, and that time the Irish came with six. Yep, and that's what they have to do. They've got to mix it up to the point. You saw that Edge had to get rid of the football. I think it was Anthony Peterson who came right up the middle, number 49. There he is. He's unblocked. And that, you know, that is just what the Irish have to do. When you don't have an even matchup physically, you're going to have to take chances. Second and 10 of the 20, 107 to go, first half. 13 7 Gators. Their whole philosophy tonight is a gambling one on the part of the Irish. This time it is a four man rush. And Matthews just throws it away. Third and ten. Good coverage this time. Deep by Tom Carter against Harrison Houston. Interesting to watch Lou calling, actually calling the defenses from the sidelines. And now pointed out, Gary Darnell is on with John Makovic to the University of Texas. Darnell, the defensive coordinator, formerly with Notre Dame. Third and 10 at the 20. Irish rush three. Here's a screen. Rhett makes the one-handed catch, but he can't get the blocking he needs because the pass floated into his hands. He is stopped at the 19 by Gibson, and uh, Florida will have to send in the field goal unit. A little screen to control a pass rush is, is almost non-existent. It's not a type of play you would anticipate calling. And not very effective either. Pretty good hands there by Rhett. 
Don't confuse him just with being a rusher, even though he had almost 1,200 yards. Uh, an excellent receiver as well, and Flores had to take a timeout here. Actually, you know what happened? The Irish took this timeout here because the Gators were going to let as much time go off the clock as they could. Down to 23 seconds, uh, since they're going to attempt a field goal anyway. Notre Dame figures they might as well try to conserve whatever they can. That's the, uh, the end of the first half. It's going to be a 36-yard attempt. Well, they've had a couple of explosive kickoff returns, and uh, why not? Let's get an opportunity to do it again. Shazewski will be attempting a field goal. He's made one from 26. He's made another from 24. What a great city for a bowl game. They do. They get into it. They do that, although it's much like playing the University of Miami in the Orange Bowl. I mean, this is this is not much different than Notre Dame having to visit Gainesville in terms of the crowd noise. Uh, this is a road game all the way for Notre Dame and a home game for Florida. 36 yard field goal attempt for Shazeski. And he has been, as Dan Jenkins would put it, dead solid perfect tonight. Three field goals, three attempts, 20 seconds remaining, and it is 16 to 7, Florida. And again, Lou Holtz is letting it stretch. And when they get down close inside the 20, well, that's when they've been tightening up, and Florida unable to get it into the end zone, having to settle for the field goal. Shane Matthews, 6'3, 192 pounder. We ask him if he was thinking about coming out. Of course, he's a redshirt junior. He said, no, nah, nobody's interested in me. Nobody talked to me. Thrown 28 touchdowns. 60% passer. A lot of it has to do with an offense designed by Steve Spurrier. Brilliantly conceived. More of a professional type of offense than you see in a college game today. And a reflection of this man who was the number one draft pick of the 49ers and spent 10 years in the NFL. Mainly backing up... Uh, John Brody from the 35 yard line. It's Ruland who kicks off. It is taken at the 10 yard line by Clint Johnson and he slips down at the 27 yard line with 15 ticks left in the first half. Well let's see what do we have for you at halftime. Tonight we've got highlights of the Cal Clemson matchup in Orlando, the Citrus Bowl. Ooh, what we, a shocker that was! We have highlights of the game from Pasadena between Washington and Michigan. We'll have all of today's results. Dan will do the highlights there. Get into that, huh, Dan. Well, you have to say Washington made a a real claim to number one. It'll be interesting to see the polls. From the 26-yard line, Meyer throws. Culver makes the catch. He's tackled up at the 33-yard line. And Notre Dame is going to take a timeout to get off one final play before the gun. Timeout. Notre Dame. Number two. Notre Dame had hoped uh, not only to, to win tonight's game uh, simply because you want to win every game you play, but here's a team that's taken a, a little bit of heat. And when you think about it, Notre Dame is granted uh, a pretty exalted status in the world of college football, and they are probably the only at-large number 18 team that could be invited to a big-time bowl like the Sugar Bowl because they are Notre Dame. And a lot of people said, hey, wait a second, what are they doing here? Why not Penn State or why not a team that other people felt were more worthy of it? They have a huge national following. Mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> you ever see a team so down with a nine and three record? No. At the, with the level of competition that they take nine. part in every year. Nine and three doesn't get it in South Bend. No, it doesn't, doesn't. Mm -mm. But it gets you into the Sugar Bowl is yes, what it, it does. does. Yes, it does. Because they have such a large national following, they have a, they're good for television. Mm -hmm. Let's be realistic. No question. And it's not like they're a bad football team. No. Nope. They aren't that. Five seconds to go. This should be the final play of the half. And they keep it on the ground and they give it to Bettis. And as the clock runs out, down he goes at the 44-yard line. That's interesting to call a oh, timeout time out to run a draw. draw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So is the defense interesting tonight. <laughs> It'll get more interesting in the second half. Halftime. 
USF and G Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. And the Florida Gators on top 16 to 7. Let's go to Tim Brandt. All right, Al. Lou, you were worried about the pressure or lack of on Shane Matthews. And again, that was a problem in the first half. Our, our coverage is really good. You know, it we're making been. him pulling it down and look, take a second look. But we just can't get any pressure. We rush four most of the time. Uh, it's hard to play them, man. And the other thing is we got to control the ball on offense. You know, we turn it over first and 10 on their 40. But uh, they're an awfully good football team. I give them credit. We just got to regroup and come out. A couple of movements offensively. Was that because of Rick's throat? Well, Rick, Rick, Rick has we audible and we have trouble on him, particularly the noise in here, but he really does have a lot of difficulty with his voice right now. One final question. The injury to Hendrick, how serious and will he be back? No, Craig won't be back. Uh, I, they, I understand he was just running down when it when it popped. Uh, he had done it all week, you know, for a couple of weeks and he seemed to be in good shape. It's just something he'll be out. How's your backup? Well, what backup? If you see us, go for it. If we're in punt formation, look for a fake. All right, Luke. Thank thanks. you. Good luck. All right, Al, back up to you. <laughs> All right, Tim. And we won't tell Steve Spurrier. No. <laughs> and they don't have a TV in their locker room. No. 16 to 7, the Gators lead it at the half. And here's a message from Jeff Probert, Chevrolet's general marketing manager on this year. Frank Gifford, Dan Beardorf, 16 to 7, Florida. At the half. Cole Pepper, the defensive tackle for the Gators. Consensus All-America. Kickoff fielded by Clint Johnson for Notre Dame. As we start Whoa. the third quarter, and he gets leveled. Up at the 30-yard line, the tackle is made by Lex Smith, a one-time quarterback, now a defensive end. ABC Sports presentation of the USF&G Sugar Bowl is being brought to you by Dodge, a division of Chrysler Corporation, and by US f and Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto, and life. First down, Irish at the 30-yard line as they begin in the eye. And start on the ground. And this is Rodney Culver up to the 36-yard line. It'll be second down and four. Ed Robinson in on the tackle, and uh, Florida three to one in first downs, and uh, two to one in most of the other categories. And, I, and one number really look, jumps out. Look at Notre Dame, only 34 rushing yards. I mean, this is a football team. Bettis had a 977 yards. Culver had 573. Brooks had 919. Where's this great rushing attack? Here's Culver. Well, they're going to try to show it to us now in the third quarter. Culver carries twice and has a first down. I think that was Lewis' philosophy, and you heard him talk to Tim Brown as he left the field. He said, we've got to move the ball on the ground. We've got to keep their offensive team off the field. And his defense, however, is designed to stretch and not break. Uh, they pulled that off pretty good, but they have not been able to generate the other oh. part, and that's control the football. And as impressive as their total yardage figures, their averages, 5'8", 5'4", and 6'1". Mm -hmm. Here is Brooks in the Gator territory, and here comes that running attack now. First down at the Gator 45. Anderson and White converge on the tackle. It's a 13-yard game for Tony Brooks. Well, it's a huge offensive line. They outweigh the Florida front. Run blocking is their specialty. And look at that right there. An excellent block by Mirko Yurkovic as he takes Culpepper out of the play. It, you call it Yurkovic. I call it Jerkovic. Yep. It's either or. It's tomato, tomato. <laughs> and he doesn't really care. Here's Brooks, or Brooks, <laughs> picks up four. Gets it to the 41. Yeah, the main thing is he buried Brad Culpepper. And Culpepper, a potential professional high draft pick for Florida, is really not sure where he is going to wind up playing. He's been told that maybe he should beef up and be a nose tackle, maybe he should lighten up and be a linebacker, but he's got the attitude. He's certainly got the intelligence, an academic All-American, but he's looking forward to play. And second and seven, huge hole. Takes it down to the 22-yard line. And Cole Pepper was out of the lineup for one play, and they just ripped the area where he ordinarily would have been. He went over to the sidelines, and he has now come back on, but right over the right tackle, and Jerkovic, Jerkovic makes a great block, 
and wide open for a culvert. Well, it was a trap play, and the off guard, Aaron Taylor, number 75, came all the way across and got the kick out on Gunter. Notre Dame ought to stick with it. First down to 23, and they stick with it. Brooks on the ground. Gets bumped at the 19, and then surges forward to the 15-yard line. I think the Gipper paid a visit to the Notre Dame <laughs> locker room. <laughs> they go, this is not the same team that we saw in the first half. Has there been a Ronald Reagan sighting anywhere here? Somebody, somebody went in there and got these guys juiced up, much to his chagrin. Rockney could have come back. Close. This is an offensive football team for Notre Dame that wasn't here in half number one. Second and three at the 16-yard line. On the ground again. Over to the short side of the field. Runs right to the first down marker, and he's close. Bumped down by Bartley. That time, big Justin Hall. He is a almost a 300-pounder, number 73, without leading that charge. There he is. When a guy's officially listed at 297, that's close enough to count. It's rounded off. It depends on whether it's in the morning or the evening. <laughs> third down and inches. That's the 13. This is the opening drive of the third quarter. 12-15 left in the period. Gators on top, 16 to 7. Straight key. And they give it to the fullback, and that's a first down as that's the first carry in this half for Jerome Bettis. <laughs> First down, Irish just outside the 10, so they can't get a first down without getting the touchdown. Look at the size of a shoulder pass on Jerome Bettis. This, this is the guy who put full in fullback. That is a big man, 250 pounds, and runs bigger than that. Now you ask out of USC, 78 yards against the Trojans, a 53-yard touchdown. He turned it around for him. First and 10. And they give it to Bettis, running out of the fullback slot here, taking it to the eight. Second down, and they can get, as I say, a first down without getting a touchdown. And they are in a position where they have excelled this year. When the Irish have been inside the 20, they've been there 57 times, and they have 45 touchdowns and five field goals. Well, that's a reflection of their size, wouldn't you say, Dan, and the big bruising fullback? And it also has to do with execution. I mean, that is remarkable, I think. 45 touchdowns out of 57 trips inside the 20. That'd be remarkable inside the 10. Second and eight from the nine. Brooks takes it to the six, so it'll be third down and five for the first and almost six for the touchdown as Robinson makes the tackle. You see Brooks carry the football. Now he's about a 220-pounder and over 900 yards rushing and... Then they can hammer you with Culver behind that big line, and then they bring the big man, Bettis. They're tough to deal with in short yardage situations. Ten plays on this drive, everyone on the ground. Third and five. Meyer on the option. Keeps, and that's no gain. He is stopped at the six. There's a flag down. And it came in late from out of the secondary. Jim Springer is the referee. And it's against the Irish. The indication of a chop block against Notre Dame, and they're going to discuss the options with Culpepper. Well, seeing that it brings up fourth down, you can see Culpepper saying he declined it. Blow the waist, penalty is declined, fourth down. Now, here's where Notre Dame is in a tough spot without a kicker. They need a touchdown and a field goal to take the lead. So they're going to trot somebody out here to yeah. try and kick it. And here is the damage that was done, the illegal block. Here is Kevin Pendergast, who was recruited from the soccer team. He did kick against Penn State. And this is a 23-yard field goal attempt, <laughs> and it is good. <laughs> That's a good drive for Notre Dame to come out. Take the football, hold it for five minutes, gripping the defense of Florida, putting themselves back into the football game emotionally as well as physically. And then at least coming away with three. It would have been better to get seven, but they got something out of it. Three from the reserve kicker. 
16 to 10. That guy's not even on the roster. Kevin Pendergast forced into duty. His only playing time during the regular season, a kickoff at Penn State. And again, if you join this late, there is one of the finest kickers in the country who was hurt, Craig Pendergast. Injured against Tennessee, didn't play against Penn State or Hawaii. He started tonight's game, but he's hurt again. The kickoff fielded at the 10-yard line by Harrison Houston. And he gets tackled up at the 27-yard line. McGill makes the stop, and let's get a word from Tim Branton. All right, Al Pendergast did not even come with the Notre Dame team when they came to New Orleans after Christmas, Christmas night. Instead, he came down with the walk-ons, what they call a three-day trip. They're not expected to play. They let him bring bring them down just for three days to enjoy the, the bowl activities, but here he is now, a major part of this game. Do you ever realize how many strange stories surround kickers? There's always a story behind the story. Well, I'll tell you what, if he kicks a uh, field goal that wins this game, he ought to demand did he get left down here for an extra week's vacation? He, he got short change. Take up for that lost time. That's right. From the 27-yard line, here's Willie McClendon, who takes it up to the 35-yard line, a gain of close to eight. 9.45 remaining in the third quarter. Florida leading Notre Dame 16 to 10. Florida coming into the game, a six to seven point choice. What's that mean? Well, it means a lot of people thought Florida would win by about a touchdown. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why do they care about that? Notre Dame has changed nothing. No Four down lineman. Second and three. Here is McClendon. He is stopped at the 35-yard line. And from Miami comes word that the Hurricanes have added a field goal. And they lead by a score of 22 to nothing in the Orange Bowl in the third quarter. And a blowout that's turning into. That Miami uh, doing much the same as what the University of Washington did earlier this afternoon to, to Michigan. Third, playing its plan. Third and two. This is McNabb. And he is stopped short of the first down. They will mark it at the 30 six-yard line, and that's going to force a Florida punt. I don't know if they're going to bring the sticks out here or not. The Florida guys are oh, there's a flag like down, too. Uh, there's a marker that uh, emerges after the unpiling of the players. Well, we get the signal of a penalty, but we don't get a, a direction. There's a referee's timeout, I think. Uh, we're going to sort things out here. It's a good idea. Jim Springer is the referee. This looks like an NFL conference here. Well, Lou is probably already perceived that it's going to go against Florida and he wants to take it. Back him up. 12 men on the field. Offense 15 yards from the previous spot. Third down. 15, 15 from the previous spot. Hmm. 15 yard penalty for having 12 guys on the field? Well, and, and he accepts the penalty instead of it being fourth and in inches. He would prefer it to, to be third down and 16. Just last Saturday, we would have not have had that sort of a, an assessment. Yeah. That's a five-yard penalty in the NFL. It's also it's an interesting call here for Holtz, too, because, you know, fourth and inches, you, you would figure Florida would punt, but he elects to have them go at well, it again on third down. Well, I don't know. Maybe they had the distance for a first down. Mm, I, don't, I don't think so. On third down, the catch is made. First down. They do now. He gets to the 39-yard line. Rod Smith makes the hit. Oh, well, what a night Willie Jackson is having. He came in tonight with 10 touchdowns on 51 receptions, and he is enhancing his reputation rapidly tonight. I bet you're right about now. Lou Holtz wishes they would have brought out the chain so he could have known yep. for sure as to whether or not Florida had the first down. And that's just a replay that we've been seeing all night tonight. Willie Jackson loose and making a catch. You see him stab it backhanded. Good receivers do that. Oh, this guy's, this guy again, uh, uh, 
just like we said about Derek Brown, the Notre Dame tight end. Here's a guy that has NFL written across his chest as well. First down from the 39-yard line, and this is Eric Rett. Gain of three, and let's go down to Tim again. All right, Alan, with John Palermo, who was the defensive line coach at Notre Dame in 1988 when they won the national championship. You're back again. You've been a head coach since. Uh, number one, how can they get more pressure on Shane Matthews? Well, I think right now what they probably need to do is a little bit more twist and a little more something back inside. Defensive coordinator's job is open. Can we expect you to be there? No, I don't think you can expect anything at this point right now. I just came down as a spectator to watch a football game. Would you be interested? Well, sure, I'd be interested. All right, Al. I want that. Tim, second, he'd be interested in your job, too. Second and seven. Wide open. Matthews underthrows it, and Everett became a defensive back to break up what would have been a Rod Smith interception. Well, again, it was Shane Matthews finding the wide open receiver very late. Look at the top of your screen now. Again, it's Willie Clark. And this is ever wide open there for a moment. Right here, he's open. Shane is still struggling around. Then he underthrows the ball, and it's almost picked off. Rod Smith going up, and as you said, Everett had to come back and make certain that it wasn't. A twist, by the way, is the outside man dealing with the inside man on the defensive line. Third and eight. Basically, the 41 yard line. Matthews forced to throw after he backpedals. Nearly picked off by DuBose, but he couldn't hang on. Boy, that was some effort by Demetrius DuBose. We saw him have to leave the game in the first half after a collision with Eric Rett, but now he's back. Lou Holtz moved him into the middle, and he's in really a trail position. And the ball gets there late. Matthews was under some pressure, and he almost came up with a big-time play for Notre Dame. Finally, a little pressure on Shane Matthews as Troy Ridgely was in the face of Matthews and forced him to throw. Shane Edge to do the punting now for Florida. They were a man light. They only had 10 guys out there, and at the last second, just ran in somebody else. They got to get this off in a hurry. The play clock is down to two. They snap it at one. Ooh. Nearly blocked. Great kick. Irish let it bounce at the five, and the Gators, can they get there? Oh, they... Well, do they or don't they? Yeah, they're no, going to call it. They're going to call it a touchback. <laughs> well, that's, that's a half a touchback call. What are they calling here? That's a beanbag call. The beanbag... It's a touchback. Yeah, it's a touchback. And actually... I got the impression by looking at it that if, that if they didn't touch the ball at all, it wasn't going to go in. Right there is where they knocked the ball across the line. Woo. <laughs> if Florida doesn't touch it a second time, they've really pinned Notre Dame back there. Sent our bloodhounds on the camera crew out to find some action in New Orleans, and they found it. Bourbon it Street. Well, they had a parade there last night, didn't they? Mm -hmm. A lot of folks dressed up as animals. Yeah, well, some strange ones. Masamoto is leading the pack at one point, I saw. <laughs> Irish Abbott at the 20-yard line after the duck track, first and 10. Rick Meyer throws to the near side, and the catch is made inbounds at the 27-yard line by Tony Smith. Good field by Tony Smith, the junior receiver who this year had to step into the shoes of the Rocket. A little balancing act uh -huh. on the sidelines. Oh, that's pretty. Fine effort. Some major league flexibility there, too. Mm -hmm. Second down and three at the 27. 6.59 to go third quarter. Florida ahead 16 to 10. Meyer, that short drop. He slipped again, and that's a first down. Up at the 37-yard line. Every time you take a look at, at Rick Meyer, you're looking into his face, and, and I know the comparison's been made a lot, but he looks like a young Joe Montana. He has that physical appearance and walks like him, and of course wears the same number Joe wore at Notre Dame. And it's also, you know, he has, he doesn't have the mobility that Montana had. You know, that's one of the things that when Joe Montana first came to the NFL, he was, you know, there haven't been many better than Joe Montana's scramble. Myra is good, mm -hmm. but he's not quite the movement kind of guy that Montana was. Here's Brooks. 
gain of six. Apparently, uh, Montana sent number 50 Meyer a couple of notes this year. One said, hey, you're wearing my number, take good care of it. Yeah. And Meyer is, and here they are through the year. Steve Berline, by far, the career passing yardage leader for Notre Dame and Thiesman and Hanratty. And uh, Meyer, he will not add to that total tonight. That is regular season only. Bulls don't count, but he is even with Montana. And uh, Steve Berline resurfaced as a force for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Second down and four. Brooks again out to the 50 yard line and that pounding ground attack for Notre Dame re-emerging in the second half of this game. Yeah, this is what Lou Holtz did not have in the first half and again we'll reiterate he told Tim Brandt everything is fine we're getting the coverage we want even though they're getting the pass completions but we are not able to control the ball ourselves on the ground and now they're moving it well you, you wonder if some of that almost wasn't self-inflicted you, you didn't see a real commitment to trying to run the ball there in the first half from the 50 on first down Meyer with some touch and it is Brooks who drops it at the 31 yard line it floated in there white with the coverage and Brooks simply couldn't hold on Pretty good touch, but a pretty good way to lose a wide receiver also. Pretty good way to lose somebody because of Will White. Watch number two, number two here. He'll come in from the right of your screen, and he's going to put the lick on Brooks. It separates him from the football. And known as a big hitter back in the middle. But that's a good mix-up. They've been having success, some success on first down. Go ahead and try to throw one down the middle on first down. Second and ten. Draw. Big hole for Big Bennett. First down as he pounds down to the 38-yard line. Well, Bennett might be better served if at 250 pounds he doesn't do a whole lot of juking. It just drops that shoulder. Let's take a look at him again, Ed. Keep in mind, 5'11", a 250-pound huge gaping hole, and Notre Dame has come out here with a commitment <laughs> here in the second half. It's just sometimes hard to change that mass when you have that kind of velocity going for you. Almost faked himself right into the turf. Mahalko is now in the game at fullback. Good Take to him, the cross to Culver. Culver swings to the outside, has the first down before he is run out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. On great blocking out front by his two receivers, Dawson and Smith. Both of them tied up their people and made that play happen. The simple option down the line by Myron. He executed it beautifully. He'll see the man in his face. There he is right there. He flips it out. And here goes Culver. Gets a good block, as Dan mentioned. Kicks it into gear and gets inside the 20. First and 10 at the 17. Irish trailing by six. That much time left in the third. That is breaking tackles. Takes it to the nine-yard line. Oh, we are watching two different football games, the one in the first half and here in the second half. And if Bettis doesn't go down on the last tackle, he walks into the end zone. But talk about a load. A guy bringing a big guy to the dance. Here we go. Watch the Florida defense just bounce off Jerome Bettis at the line of scrimmage. I mean, those are two solid hits at the line. One by Bartley, one by Gunther, and he just shakes them both off. Second and two. Meyer tosses, it's an errant toss to Culver, who picks it up, and he's out of bounds at the 24-yard line. A big loss. Well, that does hurt indeed. The old option again, it was successful a few moments ago, and it was not that poorly thrown. They were a little close together, and there was maybe a little too much velocity. Let's take a look again. Myra down the line, sees the confrontation ahead. Flips it out to Culver. One that he probably has handled many times in games and many times in practice, but this one he doesn't. They went from second and two to third and 17 on a 15-yard loss to the 24-yard line. They have to get to the seven to convert. A pass underneath to Smith. Smith gets to about the eight, so Holtz has a decision here. It's going to be fourth and one if that's familiar remember the rocket how many times he has broken that across the field and this time tony smith with maybe not the speed and 
probably not even the talent, but he is a quick receiver. We saw him come with it earlier, right down the line of scrimmage. It's underneath the zone and streaks down inside the 10. And it's fourth and a long one, and Notre Dame will line up to go for it. They come up in a tee, as they have in these situations tonight and throughout much of the season. And they give it to Big Bettis, and he has the first down as he takes it to the six-yard line. Second effort. He was hit short of the first down, and the big man gets it done. Well, he's reminiscent size-wise size -wise of a guy like Craig Hayward, the fullback from Pitt who plays here in New Orleans for the Saints, but a, a big man who has the ability to turn, a guy who has the ability to change holes, but yet nothing but size and power is able to overcome being hit like that at the line of scrimmage and end up two yards farther down the line. And a complete reversal here. Notre Dame dominating Florida here in the second half. First and goal, they give it to Brooks behind Bettis and Culver, and he takes it to the four. And now you're getting into that territory where Bettis can just smell the end zone. Bettis scored 16 touchdowns on the ground this year and four more through the air. 120 points for Bettis. Again, we talked about the frequency with which Notre Dame has been able to get into the end zone when they get in that red zone. Yeah, we showed it to you before. What was it, 45 times they scored touchdowns when they were inside the 20. I mean, 57. Wow, that's remarkable. Second and goal. Here is Bettis, and he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. He is hit first by William Gaines, number 94, stopping him in his tracks. Third and goal upcoming. The ever-pacing Holtz with 2.40 to go in the third. Well, if I was a quarterback, I'd love to fake it to Bettis and then try to find my tight end, Derek Brown, roaming that end zone. You got a six foot, six inch tight end. I, or give your quarterback some kind of a rollout. It's Brown lining up on the right side. Straight T, third and goal. Here's the fake. Meyer looking. Meyer finding the other tight end. Irv Smith, touchdown. He just had the wrong tight end, Dan. Good call. A little play action, a little roll. And new ball game. And we could have a new leader. Man, I almost made the paper. That is good execution. And don't get lost on just this one play that ended up being a touchdown. What a third quarter we are seeing being turned in by Notre Dame. And every kick is high drama here for now Notre Dame. Pendergast, the soccer kicker, again with Hendrick hurt and out. Boots it through, and that gives the Irish their first lead of the night. He looks pretty good to me. Yeah. He's nice and smooth. And here again, there's the play fake. Bettis taking tacklers into the end zone. Good hide by Myra. Finding the tight end, Irv Smith. Kid with the uh, wire. I mean, Lou needs a wireless. It's real simple. You know, I mean, he never looks up. Uh, it's like the game is not being played. He's got to be, you know, like some kind of a biology major or something. No, I care less. He's probably an electrical engineering student. He's probably <laughs> thinking about his frog back at the lab, you know. Hmm. Rick Meyer getting a little cool air blown on him. I wouldn't cool him off at all. Kickoff well, is out of bounds well, off the foot of Pendergast. That was a handsome kick. <laughs> Pendergast feeling his oats a little bit. He thought, well, I'm going to, I mean, he wrote now, I'll ram one into the end zone. That's a field goal, and uh, his extra point is the difference in the game at the moment. That's Duck how you get it right over the left. That's how you get to be three on the tee. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. You know, turn that right hand over a little more. Two long scoring drives in this quarter, and they lead 17 to 16. They trailed 16 to 7 at the half. Okay, it's incumbent now upon Florida to get themselves together. Notre Dame is not going to change defensively. It's worked for them. It's been effective. They'll stretch. They won't give you much of a rush, but they're going to cover all of your receivers. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. This is wet on the ground, picking up close to 12. So Florida figuring turned about his fair play. Maybe they'll do it on the ground now. And they had the guy who can do it in number 33, Eric 
Red, and that is correct. E R R I C T. Notre Dame staying right with their four down front. There are two basic linebackers and five defensive backs. From the 46 yard line, first down. Matthews. Had forever, Ooh. but the receivers are covered, and he is hit as he reaches the boundary of the 45 yard line by McGill. Good coverage again by Notre Dame downfield. You got to start calling it, I mean, just awesome coverage. When a quarterback with that much time can't find an open receiver, Frank, I mean, that's that's bordering on unthinkable. You know, Steve Spurrier likes to go way upfield, and you've almost got to put something underneath now. You got to get us little back slipping out. They're going to be wide open if you do it. If you throw underneath the coverage instead of going deep with it. That's a very valid point, Frank. Second and 12 at the 45. That much time left in the third quarter. Irish by one. Irish show blitz. Here they come. But they pick up Dubose. And over the middle, that opens it up for Rhett to pick up a first down at the 34-yard line. Oh, and a good pickup of the blitz. When a team doesn't blitz as frequently as Notre Dame, is, or not as much as Notre Dame tonight, ordinarily you tend to forget it, but they picked it up great, and it was a good read on the part of Matthews, and a good shot to Rep. And I'll tell you something about Eric Rep. as you see that blitz pickup, Spurrier is right. This guy does not go down on the first contact. This guy bounces off the first guy every time. That was a very good job holding onto the ball after a big hit. Red again on first down. Picks up eight yards, taking it to the 27-yard line. Stopped by McDonald as the Gators try to retake the lead. Yeah, let's go back and look at the previous play. Watch Eric Rett and watch the hit he takes. Now, with the ball still out away from his body, you know, it's not often that you're going to see a guy hold on to a ball. Rod Smith put a heck of a <laughs> shot on him, and he held on to the football. He hurt eight, Rod Smith. Yeah, eight out of ten times, that guy coughs up the ball, much less shuck the tackler and keep on going. Second and a short two. And Rhett gets about a short two, real close. Takes it to the 25-yard line. And Matthews indicating that Rhett's going to pick up the first down. That will be totally dependent on where they mark it. Close enough to measure. Clock stops 36 seconds. Might be something uh, that we third quarter. have not been informed about that. As usually, that wrap you see is indicative of a, a, some kind of a groin pull. That type of wrapping. And we've heard nothing about that in rep stage in the game, but he does have that kind of a wrap on. Third and inches. There it is. It's either that or a fashion statement. We should bring Elsa Clinch in for the commentary. Or yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Al, you just always say exactly what I want. Third and inches at the 25. And on a keeper. That's enough for the first down. Excellent surge. Matthews gets the one, takes it to the 24. This machine-like precision now on the part of both teams. They've been able to move back and forth, up and down the field. Good offensive showing, good football game. Both of these teams showing an awful lot of fire, I'll say that. This is this has turned out to be just a good game. You love these kind of nice, don't you? Yeah, I do. That's going to end the third quarter. And so the, I, the Fighting Irish erase a nine-point deficit. They lead 17-16 as we go to the fourth, and back we come with the Sugar Bowl into this commercial message and a word for ABC Station. leading Nebraska 22 to nothing in the Orange Bowl there in the fourth quarter. And we start the fourth quarter in New Orleans. Notre Dame has a one-point lead in his first and ten Florida at the Irish 24. And Shane Matthews to throw. Going for six. And it is knocked away in the end zone by the big play man, Tom Carter, intended for Trey Everett. Steve Sprayer continues to try to go up on top. 
And when they'll give you so much underneath, Tom Carter, he's going to put into a full sprint now. He's right there, perfect position on Harrison. They're giving you so much underneath, and Florida continues to try to take the big thing. Tom Carter led the team in interceptions this year with five. Second down and ten from the 24-yard line. Over the middle, the catch is made at the 15-yard line, and that's Aubrey Hill, who's been pretty quiet tonight. He gets nine here to the 15-yard line. It will be third down and one, and we will survey the numbers through the first 45 minutes of competition. And remember the last time we analyzed Notre Dame's numbers at halftime, what they have, 34 yards rushing? Now they have 141 yards rushing. I mean, an extremely impressive third quarter for Notre Dame. And they have the lead. Third, third, turn around. third and one at the 15-yard line. This is Rhett, and he cannot get out of the backfield. Anthony Peterson led the charge, and it's going to be fourth and a long one or short two for Spurrier's Gators. Decision time now for Steve Spurrier. He's going to take a look and see how far it is. Field goal team standing by, ready to come on. Field goal, of course, and Florida takes the lead. And we're going to get a little time out and think about it. Florida takes the timeout with 13.48 remaining in the fourth quarter. It is 17 to 16. Notre Dame. Infinity Tournament of Champions final round coverage a week from Sunday from the Acosta Country Club in Southern California here on ABC. Fourth down, a long one at the 15-yard line for Florida. Matthews barking, trying to get Notre Dame to jump. Play clock is down to three. Now they're not even going to run a play. And good discipline for the Irish. They do not jump. And Florida will be assessed a five-yard delay of game penalty. And then attempt a field goal, which would give them the lead. Well, kind of an exercise frustration there because <laughs> during the timeout, I'm sure that was discussed by the special teams coach and both sides of the field, what we're going to try to do. And, of course, they're obviously going to try to draw them off. And they must also have a great deal of... Good ball. Delay of game. Offense, five yards. Also have a lot of faith in their kicker. And Notre Dame showing they're not a bunch of defensive donkos. There's no way they're going to jump no off sides. No. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If this field goal just misses, uh, that five-yard penalty will be... Exactly. <laughs> look, look at Lou. Look High-fiving on the sidelines. Yeah. He's, he's happy with his defensive team, and he should be. Mm -hmm. Maybe not that happy, but... This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt for Shazetsky. With three for three tonight, 26, 24, and 36. So this is his longest kick to give the Gators the lead. And this one is good. Again, he's four for four. Hmm. Says Spurrier. 13-42 remaining and the Gators are back on top it is Florida 19 and Notre Dame 17. and the still remaining in the Sugar Bowl it's been a beauty Florida on top 19 to 17 and the Gators to kick off Kuzeski, who's got four field goals tonight, sends it into the end zone, oh. and Johnson, after some hesitation, comes out with it, <laughs> ironically brings it back to where it would have come had he just downed it into the end zone, uh, the 20-yard line. Lou Holtz at practice yesterday, as loose as can be. I mean, he is he's almost like a cartoon character in a way. You want to pair him with Tunsis and put on a new... Hey. There he was, the diminutive little philosopher, and he has certainly returned the glory to Notre Dame over the past few years. No question about that. He tried his little cha-ching there, but missed. <laughs> First down, Irish. 
At the 20-yard line as Brooks brings it out to the 24-yard line. It'll be second and six. Of course, he was very happy that his defensive unit yeah. showed that discipline, didn't jump offside. I, you know, I looked at Dan, and Dan looked at me, and, and that's what they're not supposed to do. And it was like a, a major a victory there when they did. But, I mean, you've got to pay. Hey, Lou Holtz, you know, deserves to be excited. His Notre Dame team is hanging right in there. Brooks again nearly slips and gets it just across the 25-yard line. It's going to be third down and almost five. Love to have been a fly on the wall in there at halftime to hear his words of wisdom. You know why some of these guys are slipping? Where they took off the pro hash marks for the Shane Falcon scheme the other day. Apparently there's some oil or some residue there. And we've seen a lot of slippage tonight in that particular area. You can see where the, the pro hash marks are, which are inside the college hash marks. Third down and four at the 26 yard line. That Meyer almost slips the game, oh. has it knocked away. It's recovered at the 12-yard line by the Gators. Well, you're right, Al. He slipped right on that, but then Darren Mickle, number 92, the big play defensive lineman for the Gators, intentionally stripped Rick Meyer of the football. I oh, mean, he did a great job. That was, uh, as we it. see Lawrence Taylor do so often in the NFL, comes in, hammers down the right arm, and broke loose the football. Meyer not even aware that he's there, and here comes Meyer. Good coverage now downfield because he wants to release it right there. And you can see, top of your screen, good coverage. Now, here comes Mickle. Whack. And a relatively turnover-free game. A big one now for Florida. First and 10 at the 12. 12-18 to go. Wreck. Down to the 8. Picks up a hard four. It'll be second and six. Rod Smith up from the secondary to stop him. Notre Dame has turned the ball over three times tonight. Florida ahead, 19-17. Second down, six at the eight. McNabb is the fullback. Brett is the tailback. The big man. Nate Tourette. Matthew throws too high. Intended for Willie Jackson. He's oh. seven balls tonight. It'll be third and six of the eight. Not a well-thrown ball by Matthews because Jackson crossing from all the way over the right side, uh, albeit a difficult pass to deliver, but... He just didn't get it there, and that could have been an easy six for Jackson with his speed. Threw it out in front of him. And Jackson, you can see his frustration. <laughs> yep, hmm. I guess you can. Great. Well, sometimes those are, those are the toughest passes. You have the longest to think about them, and sometimes you, you think yourself into putting too much touch on it. Third and six. Play clock is down to two, one. They get it away. Matthews throws to the end zone, and Everett can't handle it. Had his hands on it in the corner of the end zone. He had position on Clark, but he couldn't haul it in, and the Gators will settle for a field goal attempt. Pretty good coverage by Willie Clark, the speedster. Pretty good coverage is right, Frank, but what a job of sucking it up and stiffening when they had to by Notre Dame's defense. A touchdown here would have been catastrophic, and to force Florida into a field goal attempt is a major victory for Notre Dame's defense. I'll tell you, the replay, that ball should have been caught for yep. six. You're right. Ever just didn't handle it. He was on a pretty pass, but one he should have caught. 24-yard attempt for Shuzetsky, and he has just established a new Sugar Bowl record. Five field goals tonight for the senior from Tampa, and the Gators are up. 22 to 17 with 11 21 to play in New Orleans. He's gone in the second half. Rick Meyer took his Irish out in front 17 to 16, but two subsequent Florida field goals. The Gators lead by five. Kazeski's kickoff is fielded at the 15 yard line by Rodney Culver. 
and he brings it back out to the Irish 36 with 11 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in what has become the most dramatic game of the day. 26, 24, 36, 37, and 24 for that man after the Gators took the opening kickoff and went all the way down the field for what has turned out to surprisingly be their only touchdown of the night. And yet, Notre Dame, with a touchdown, takes the lead. Florida and the uh, team was huddled together with Lou Holt during the uh, we were away, and I'm sure he was saying, let's keep it going, then. From the 36, it is a little high, but still catchable for Tony Smith, who can't haul it in at the 50. And then he exchanges greetings with Lawrence Hatch. I think what's important for Notre Dame here, though, is to not forget that the way they got back in this football game was a power running attack. Oh, with Bettis, Culver, and Brooks hammering it up between the lines. And even though that was a good throw and a ball that should have been caught by Smith, Frank, I don't think they ought to get away from how they got back in this thing, running. And I'm sure that's exactly what they're going to go back to. Second and 10 at the 36. Hopkins flips to Culver. Culver gets a block and touched inside it and takes it up to the 45-yard line. Appears to be just a little short of the first down as Will White makes the tackle. Oh, that's textbook running of the option play by Myra. Gets the man in his face. Flips it out to Culver. Culver makes the cutback. Watch this. Couldn't be any better. There is Nickel coming upfield. He gets Myra, forces the toss. Culver waits for the blocks. Break behind the outside block and gets up well, within about a half a yard of a first down. Third and inches, third and one, just outside the 45-yard line. And scrambling for the first down is Jerome Bettis as he takes it out to the 47-yard line. It is over in Miami, and the Miami Hurricanes cap an undefeated season as they knock off Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. The final score there was 22 to nothing, so both Miami and Washington finish unbeaten. And the Gators trying to finish with just that one loss to Syracuse the third week of the season. First down at the 47. Here is Brooks. Takes it to the Florida 47-yard line for a gain of six with exactly 10 minutes to play. Well, are there any fans who might not have been with us earlier? This has been two different football games and totally dominated by Florida State in the first half. And the Fighting Irish came out of the locker room, fired up, stoked up, and they have put on a great offensive show here in the second half, particularly on the ground. They've been able to move the ball beautifully on the ground. And that's a, a very good example of it right there. When you get a second down and, and less than five, that, that's, that's what you need on first down. Second and four from the 47. Flip back to Culver. He gets a nice block. Has another first down, and the Irish take it to the Gator 35. Spear makes the tackle. And again, the Irish are outnumbered 4-1, to 5-1 to one, to one in this crowd at the Superdome. There's the Notre Dame band making its way south from South Bend. But Mickey Holmes, the executive director, saying uh, he anticipated that about 55 to 60,000 of the people in here tonight, a crowd of over 75,000, would be Gator backers. And right now they're making a lot of noise trying to make it difficult on Rick Meyer and Notre Dame's offense. From the 35-yard line, Meyer throwing a sideline around, and the catch is made by William Pollard. That is his first reception. Good pre-snap read on the part of Myra, and he is, of course, allowed the option to change it when he read the blitz was coming up. He knew he would get the single coverage on his outside man, and again, he's having a difficult time communicating. His voice is weak to begin with. It's a high voice, and here in the Dome, and that's tough, but he's also had a little problem with a sore throat, but he gets it out there for the pickup. Second and five. Brooks pounds his way to the 26-yard line. That's very close to a first down. 16 remaining. And if there is a story here of this football game, it is not that the echoes have been awakened in Notre Dame. It's the running game. 
Notre Dame here in the second half has dominated the line of scrimmage with their offensive line, and they are taking the football to the Florida Gators like they haven't seen in a long time, and they are now playing defense back on their heels. They measure for the first down here, and they are a little shy of the first. It'll be third down and in inches at the 26-yard line for the Irish. The Gators have been tough throughout the season against the run. You know, it's a classic regional battle, the power of Midwestern football against the quickness and the great athleticism of, of teams from the South. This is, a, this is an excellent illustration. Again, the straight tee, and straight ahead goes Meyer for the first down, taking it to the 24-yard line. But it's funny how the region almost dictates the character of the type of football you play. Of course, we're talking weather when you speak of Midwest football, and of course, you're talking heavy weather where you need the big men to need the power game and of course you go down south you you put that ball in the air a lot flip it around you're quick you're fast that's exactly right it's and then it makes for a good matchup and if you go to miami or go to seattle they got a couple teams in those two cities that seem to have the best of both worlds they can play with the big boys and they can run with the small guys Notre Dame with less than eight minutes to play, trailing by five. First down inside the 25-yard line. Meyer with a very deep drop, flips it to Bettis. Bettis gets it down to the 19-yard line. That's a gain of five. He is stopped there by Tony McCoy. Well, that's a well-conceived screen pass. A good scheme in that because Meyer rolls out and gives it the appearance of the rollout. And then his linemen slide down the line of scrimmage and set up just like a screen. He got Good his looking play. He got his key kickout block from Jerkovic. Take a look at it just quickly. Now he's dropping into a roll. Now look at the linemen slide out. Big number 74 moving out there. Jerkovic and Justin Hall is out there. Second and five at the 19 yard line. The tailback, Culver. Culver picks up a couple. He is stopped by Tony McCoy and another big third down play coming up. Third and a long two, short three at about the 17-yard line. Well, we'll see what the call will be. They have used in the past the option that has been successful for them on anything of major proportions. This could not be considered third and short by any means. Again, Al, we got to reiterate the, the kicking problems Notre Dame has, although they've had what two for two from the replacement mm -hmm. they're down by five it's third and a short three at the 17 yard line and this is Bettis and this is very close to a first down I would suspect close enough for a measurement as we widen out he gets the ball just inside the 15 and they will measure this or oh, they go right over the big guys don't they Jerkovic and Hall over the right side and that's the spot where Harvey Thomas the injured junior defensive and ordinarily would it be and he's not there because of the injury of course and it is a first down I would suspect that even with their kicking problems they're down by five they're not thinking field goal anyway here and even if they score a touchdown you would probably go for two because they would lead 23 22 and there's no sense kicking an extra point there you want two to make them kick a field goal to tie, to tie you. you that's absolutely right Al that's the perfect strategy but first things first for the Irish as they try to get it into the end zone. And Bettis takes a breather on first and 10 from the 14-yard line. Culver, and he is stopped for no gain. There's the biggest play Brad Culpepper has made today. One of the few times here in the second half that Notre Dame has it pounded out four or five or six yards on first down. And this play 50. even lost yardage. Just the quickness. He doesn't have all that much size at 6'2", 265, but he is very, very quick. Second and 10. This has been a 12-play drive to this point for the Irish. 5'15 to play. Florida ahead, 22 to 17. And second and 10. The option toss to Culver is inside the 10, takes it to the 4. And that'll be a first down. Culpepper makes the 
this stop. And Brad Culpepper wants to get a breather. They've been very successful with the option, with the one exception of the fumble tonight. There's a little fake to Bettis. Myra gets a man in his face, and he flips it out to Rodney Culver, and Culver with good running down inside the five. Bill Gunter had to come off the field, number 93. That's the man Frank talked about who replaced Harvey Thomas, so they are really inexperienced now to Notre Dame's offensive right. That's where they go. First and goal, and Bettis scores the touchdown. There's no mercy in this game either, Dan. No, there's not. Kevin Carter, a freshman defensive end, had to come into the ball game, and Notre Dame goes right at it. 23 to 22, and Holtz runs out onto the field. Holtz. <laughs> and here they are, Al. They're going to go for two. Yeah, they, Holtz is running out saying, don't send the kicking unit in. We, we have to go for two. That's why he ran out there. Yeah. He's either a Texas fan or they're going for two. One or the other right there. 448. Meanwhile, the play clock is winding. It's all the way down to 11 seconds right now. Notre Dame may have to take a timeout here. It's down to six seconds. There's the play clock, and they yeah. do have to take the timeout. Yeah. Holtz didn't get it communicated on mm -hmm. the sidelines fast enough. I did. They had all the time in the world to think about it. Uh, we were discussing it, what, a couple of minutes ago. And, of course, in the heat of the battle, sometimes things do slip by. Here is that touchdown again. Going to the right side Whoa. behind Yurkovic and Hall and at the freshman. And the big man pounds it in for a Notre Dame lead. Does it well. Well, we mentioned the Irish trying to get some respect back. A lot of people said, what in the world is this team doing in the Sugar Bowl? Only Notre Dame could get to the Sugar Bowl ranked 18th in the country and win the at-large first. And here they are. They start out the game as if they're going to compete totally blown away and they're ahead by three. Yeah, Myra again on the roll and look how perfectly he places that ball. You know, a point to be made here, guys, is that for years, Lou Holt has had a reputation as a coach who is unparalleled at getting his team ready to play a big game. And once again, he has shown to give it a little time, give him a chance to roll up his sleeves and go coaching. Look what he can do. I think it's wonderful what he's done defensively because he has obviously just decided, I'm not going to try to get to the passer, Shane Matthews. I'm going to cover their receivers. And frankly, that is really one dangerous philosophy with a good quarterback that's thrown for 28 touchdowns, but it's totally disrupted the offense of Florida. They moved up and down the field easily in the first half, kept trying to get big things to happen. And when Notre Dame was giving them most everything underneath, and all of a sudden, Notre Dame hung in there, hung in there, and their offense came to life. They've got to be very proud of the way they've come back. Pendergast recruited from the soccer team. The kickoff field at the 11 yard line. This is Houston. Harrison Houston brings it back to the 29, and flags come in for 40 remaining. target the guy on the right can never be accused of being in one place for more than a couple seconds Take a look at the face mask little no question about that now to the 34 Matthews under pressure has it knocked down charging in and getting a hand on it is that McGill that got it? McGill or McDonald? McDonald was putting the pressure on as well. And it'll be second and ten at the 34-yard line. Hey, what the offense has done for Notre Dame is beginning to permeate through the entire team. Their defense that struggles throughout the first half, they're smoking now. 
On second and ten, a four-man rush, but the line does its job for the Gators. Oh, and then Houston had it and just flat dropped it. He was looking for the end zone, took his eyes off the ball, and flat dropped a perfectly thrown football. Harrison Houston, good receiver, over 30 receptions into tonight. He made a good move on the cornerback. Broke it to the outside. That ball is right there. He's the fellow who scored what turned out to be the winning touchdown against Florida State. 72-yard reception. Matthews tonight, 202 yards in the first half through the air. Only 48 in the second. Third and 10 from the 34. Matthews. Up past the 40, has a first down, takes it to the 49-yard line. Boy, that's a man that had arthroscopic surgery December the 3rd. He wants to win a football game. He wasn't just running out of the pocket. He was running for a first down, and there are his parents looking on. We chatted with them earlier. Sure. Dad's looking on. Mom's not sure at this point. The old coach from Pascagoula is <laughs> anguished, to say the least. I think Mom's looking pretty composed. <laughs> Mom's getting ready for the party tonight. Yeah, she's. Something tells me uh, she might be a little more tense than it, than it appears. Oh, you better believe it. 405 from the 49 yard line on first down. Matthews flushed out, looking downfield, trying to find somebody open, and then finally tries to throw it away and nearly has it picked off by Tom Carter. Again, the coverage with just a four man rush. And he took a shot, Frank. Shane oh, Matthews at the end of that play gets stamped by Carmelia McGill. Watch this. Bang. I mean, that's the hat right in the sternum. And if you would it could be critical of the Florida State passing offense is the fact that his receivers are not coming back to him. They're not coming back and giving him anything to go to. Once they get covered downfield, they when he takes off to the right, and he always goes to the right. They've got to give him an angle and a release point. Yeah, they're ambling down there. Second down and 10 from the 49. And he throws this one in the direction of Everett, and it's not even close. It will be third down and 10 with 3.52 left. And the Irish on top, 25 to 22. And what a difference. And here in the uh, second half, of course, he hasn't had the ball that much because the Irish have dominated uh, not only on the scoreboard, but the clock as well. Only three completed passes here in the second half, although certainly that the one pass that he had in this drive to Harrison Houston where he was wide open and dropped it comes to mind. But things begin to tighten up now a little bit for Florida. Third and ten from the 49. Over the middle, too high, and incomplete intended for Jackson who tried to make a spectacular one-handed catch. And it will be fourth down and ten at the 49-yard line. Oh, uh, that would have had to been a perfectly thrown football. Uh, <laughs> it went right into the coverage. You could have got it in there, but again, Willie Jackson almost made a spectacular effort. You know, here's a real question now as we look at Jackson's effort. I mean, do you punt the ball or do you go for it on fourth and ten? I mean, you know, you could make a strong point to try to punt it and get it back. They're going for it. At least they're going to line up as if they are. And... A timeout is taken by Notre Dame. Notre Dame expected the punt, so they take a timeout with 3.47 left. And fourth and ten when we come back to the Gators. One by three, they're going for it on fourth and ten at their own 49. If they turn the ball over to Notre Dame, the Gators can stop the clock twice more. Fourth and ten, and Matthews throws, and Jackson can't. It is knocked down by DuBose, and Notre Dame gets it at the 49-yard line. Again, the pass goes right into the coverage, and you might say, well, why does Steve Spurrier not punt away with over 340 remaining? Well, his defense has been hammered almost into exhaustion here in the second half by this huge line. And he, but again, it's Matthews throwing right into the coverage. I mean, that's great coverage. you got two men on your receiver, Jackson. And it was a very risky thing to do. You could have punted away and mm. hope for a defensive break. You know, keep in, mind, not to. keep in mind, that's Demetrius Dubose, the middle linebacker who is all the way downfield 
And the ball hit him on the arm. And here goes Bettis. The up back all the way for the touchdown. Notre Dame. Well, Spurrier was right. that his ball club could lose to Notre Dame today. And when it was 13 to nothing, it was elastic on his mind. Great, courageous effort here in the second half by the Fighting Irish. Come out and dominate this game in the second half. They could have quit. Notre Dame, in their long and illustrious history, has won a lot of football games but not many that I think will be as satisfying to their players and to their coaches as this vindication of their 1991 season in some respects with this win in the Sugar Bowl. Well, you know, and we talked about it earlier in the day. If things could have gone a certain way in the Rose Bowl, a certain way in the Orange Bowl, Florida could have been battling for number one here. And Notre Dame, again, with a lot of satisfaction as the big man just explodes, Jerome Bettis carrying his 250 into the end zone. Now, before we act like this game's completely over, it is just a 10-point lead, 32-22, with three and a half minutes to play, and we all know about Florida's quick strike. But Steve Spurrier, again, I think, kind of a stunned recognition of what's happening out there, and he can hardly believe it. Well, I tell you, you send a message, though, to your team when you go on fourth and 10 with 340, remaining in the game that we've got to get this right here or we're not going to get it. Spurrier's quarterback became ice cold as well. Matthews 0 for his last eight. And he'll have to go up top, obviously, when they get it back here with 3.32 to go. Florida has two timeouts remaining, and they're down by 10. The big thing for Florida now is they just can't afford any mistakes. Kickoff has sealed it up at the 22-yard line. This is Ed Robinson, the linebacker. He brings it back up to the 36-yard line. Well, the Irish, speaking of national championship aspirations, they had them going into that Tennessee game. They'd lost only to Michigan. They had a 31-7 lead, and they blew that. And then the Bulls, of course, are always jumping the gun, and they were extended the Sugar Bowl invitation on the very day that they were blown away by Penn State. Subsequently, they were ranked 18th, and here they come in as a six-and-a-half-point dog and lead by 10. We saw Anthony Peterson, number 49, like he was limping on the sidelines. First down at the 36-yard line. Matthews fires, and that gets him off an 0-for-8 Schneid as he hits Trey Everett at the 50-yard line for a first down. And a huge break. The biggest difference, one of the big differences between college and the NFL is the way that clock stops after getting a first down. It adds so much to a drive. From the 49-yard line, that is knocked down by Willie Clark. It'll be second and 10 at the 49-yard line with 3-10 remaining. We all thought we have seen Willie Clark tonight defensively. I think they might have to have second thoughts about taking him over to offense next year where they plan on moving him. He has the great speed that they have looked for ever since they've lost the rocket. That 4-3 speed, and they do talk about moving him to offense. Where it actually started at the beginning of the year. Second and 10 at the 49-yard line. Matthews, that's caught by Houston. He takes it to the 41, and now they have to think about converting. It's third and two. Carter makes the stop. Not only are you fighting the clock, clock but you have to keep picking up first downs as well. Third and two at the 41. Gators go without a huddle. They try to pick up the first down. Rhett does it on the ground. He takes it to the 35-yard line, and the clock momentarily stops with 2.41 to play. It really does make, in the latter stages of a ball game, two and a half minutes seem like four minutes would mm -hmm. seem in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Was it stopping just like this every time you pick up a first down? First and 10, Florida at the Notre Dame 36, 2.41 to go. Gators with two timeouts. I mean, it's not supposed to stay stopped for this long. No. <laughs> what is it? 
Now they got a little confusion in the formation. You saw Spurrier trying to get a signal in, and Shane Matthews was having a heck of a time getting his receivers wide. Yeah, but what a break they got from the official. Matthews goes for Houston. He makes the catch for the touchdown. Whatever they wanted was right. And now the clock continues to run, even though they scored a touchdown. Five seconds at least rolled off the clock after he caught the touchdown pass. But well, once again, we see a Florida receiver just run right by a defender. This one, Tom Carter, what? Top of your screen, 13. I don't know what, what he thought was going to happen, where he thought he was going to get the help. And earlier was Willie Jackson who did the same thing for a touchdown that but makes it 32 to 28 now will the Gators go for one or two and they're gonna go for two and by going for two they want to win the game with a field goal if they can if they miss here they'll need another touchdown Matthews has it batted and knocked down so it's 32 to 28 oh, and that means the Gators that have to go all the way in what a big well, that's a couple of passes if we get that kind of coverage. Well, right now, Spurrier has another tough decision. Uh -huh. given, the way, uh, given the way Notre Dame has controlled the ball offensively the last time Bettis took it all the way for a touchdown, he's got to seriously consider having to go for it with the onside kick. I think he was willing to gamble, what, 341 remaining in the game on yeah. fourth down and 10. He went for it. Yeah, I, I think he's got to go with the onside kick. Make the assumption that I can't get it back defensively. Dean Lytle knocking down the pass, 32 to 28. Notre Dame up by four, 228 left. And what has uh, turned out to be the most competitive day, oh. the most competitive game on, on New Year's Day of all the ball games. I've seen in a long time. What a beauty. Gators, two timeouts. The most number of combined points. Florida scoring on its first drive tonight. And then nothing but field goals until this last touchdown. Five of them. They're going to go for an onside kick. That's the alignment. Has to go 10 yards, keep in mind, before the kicking team can recover. Unless it's touched by Notre Dame prior to that. And Rodney Culver is the man who is able to fall on it at the... 44 yard line and they had Meyer out there as well. Yep. They have the shorthanded people out there that are going to be able to handle the football, not the big guys who are not used to carrying it around. But I figure Meyer is used to taking snaps, so he's one of the shorthanded guys. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> well, he's recovered a lot of missed snaps. How's that? And that's basically what the characteristic of that ball is, yeah. wobbling along the ground. The ball has to go 10 yards for the kicking team to recover it, but it doesn't have to travel that far for the receiving team. And Steve Spurrier right now is, has to be thinking to himself, how am I going to get this thing back? They've been carrying it to me. Notre Dame comes up in a straight tee, first down. This is Brooks swinging to the outside. He stopped there for a game of two. Will the Gators spend a timeout here is the question, and they do. So they are down to one remaining. And I'll tell you Florida. something right now. Notre Dame should consider throwing some type of a high possession pass because on that last down, Florida had all 11 people within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Well, they use That's that eight-man front, and they're risky, and you're exactly right, Dan. The thing that beats it is, you know, they'll be anticipating the run. You come with a little play action, they go for it, and they get stuck man for man. Second down and eight with 219 as you look at Shane Matthews. Hot start cool in the middle and then hot now u.s figure skating championships coming your way again a week from saturday it also serves as the olympic trials our olympic team will be selected 
and Orlando daytime coverage and in the women's finals that Saturday night a week from Saturday here on ABC and in black tie ringside will be Al Michael you in the ice Al. ringside <laughs> ringside I do ringside you do ringside <laughs> Now he's sliding down the slopes of <laughs> Vail, Colorado. Now there's a football helmet that's been used yep. before. And abused. Swapped a little paint there. Yes. Apprehension. A few rolling stomachs. And an offensive line for Notre Dame that has controlled the second half. Can they do it one more time? Second and eight. And straight ahead, plunging through the middle goes Bettis, and now the Gators, <laughs> they, they were ready to call a timeout. They look towards Spurrier, and then they do call the timeout. But you saw 44, Bartley, call the timeout. They say, whoa, wait a second. What do they want to do on the bench? And well, that, that exhausts Florida, doesn't it? Well, what it means is if Notre Dame picks up the first down here, they can run out the clock. Yes. So Florida has to stop them. On third down and five at the 39-yard line. Again, this, this front line of Notre Dame deserves a great deal of credit. Hall and Yurkovic and McGuire, Taylor, Knapp. They have really gotten it done. Derek Brown, Irv Smith, the two tight ends. Uh, we talked before about being a fly on the wall. Lou Holtz, who... I was going to say, whoever lit that oh, fire under him. Lou Holtz, who recognized as one of the great speakers, after-dinner speakers, motivational speakers in America. He must have pulled out some of his best stuff at halftime. Because these, these kids responded. So he's got a new book after this one. Closely, Florida crowds the line of scrimmage here. Third and five. They've got the gamble. 39 yard line. They give it to Bennett. She picks up the first down again. And a touchdown. Unbelievable. You put them all up there. You get the seam and you're gone. You've seen it twice in minutes. I'll tell you right now, those five offensive linemen in my mind are the MVPs of this football game for Notre Dame. Well, Bettis might get a vote. If there's any justice, in, he's not even getting touched. If there's any justice in this world, those five guys and throw in the tight ends are going to win something. They have certainly dominated the second half. They're big, oh. they're strong, and watch over the right side. The big surge, you had a great block Coming out of the backfield, that was Mahalko who was in in that short yardage offense. I'm not sure Bettis got touched. I'm not sure a Florida defender even got a hand on Jerome Bettis. Pendergast with the extra point. And the Irish, once down 13 to nothing, are now up 39 to 28. Well, he did get touched, but not by much. Ryan Mahalko. In that backfield, his first call of the night, he gets a superb block, number 35. And this guy, for 250 pounds, is a scoop. Well, this, gentlemen, I'll tell you this, this has been fun. This has been real fun. And a little salute to this city. We came down here to do the Atlanta New Orleans game, and we've had a wonderful time. Sharing the sights, yeah, not to mention the food. Yeah. They're going back a little larger. A but little. A very hospitable city this is. I say we buy those offensive linemen a bowl of jambalaya over at Mother's. What do you think? Oh, huh? come on. <laughs> Why not? What a great night for... Notre Dame fans, and believe me, they're all over the world, as we have talked about earlier. Struggle through that nine and three. Nine and three would be good for a lot of people. And we're looking for vindication tonight, and boy, they got it. Well, this, I know one thing, this win won't hurt Holtz in recruiting at all this year. Mm -hmm. 
and his new contract as well, dispelling all of the uh, rumors as Robinson runs back to kick again up to the 35, and again, Florida has no timeouts left. No penalties, says Lou. No penalties. And, of course, it shouldn't be all that difficult for Steve Spurrier to recruit at Florida. I mean, this is a program now that is that has obviously overcome the problems they had when Galen Hall was the co-chair and the penalties and probations that were handed down by the NCAA. And Steve Spurrier plans on being here for a long time, and Florida, I think, will be right up there in the SEC for as long as he chooses to be here. And I'm sure they plan on him being here for a long time, and justifiably so. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Matthews throws. The catch is made at the 41-yard line by Aubrey Hill, and he's out of bounds. The only thing that's tough for Spurrier is in his own state, he's got to fight Florida State and Miami. I mean, Florida's become a, a terrific state in terms of turning out high school football players, but uh, you've got three schools compete for the stream of the crop. Well, I, I don't know that there's, there is no other state in our country that can compete with Florida right now in terms of quality of football. First down from the 45. That's Red who makes the catch, and Red scrambles to the 45 of Notre Dame, enough for a first down, and that stops the clock with 144. That's, that's a big play because it gets the clock stopped at least temporarily. If it was second and one, the clock would not be stopped here. <laughs> first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now they restart it. Take a chill, Lou. Matthews has it knocked down. Carter had it in his hand. Oh. Here's a guy who has five interceptions this season. <laughs> he can't believe he just dropped it. Flat, drop. Top of your screen once again. This time he is not going to let Sullivan get by him as he did earlier with Houston. What kind of a pass route was that by Sullivan? Hmm. Yeah. Second and 10 at the 45, 135 to go. Matthews gets crunched. I mean, crunched. And it'll be third and ten. Tough kid again. Arthroscopic surgery back at December. He stays in there. He knows he's going to get this hammer. Kind of a long gangling kid who's probably going to fill out a little bit. He's 6'3", 192 pounds, and taking nothing away from a great year that he had. 28 touchdown passes. Broke all kinds of records. Third down and ten. Matthews fires over the middle. Jackson makes the catch, and he is dragged back. From the 25 to the 28, they'll give him forward progress at the 25 with 123 remaining. Well, that's one lad I'm going to keep track of, 22. Yeah. Boy, don't you like his hands? Uh -huh. I just I like, I like everything he does out there. Soft hands. The ball just seems to just seems to be absorbed by his hands out there. No double catches, no, no juggling. Finds the opening. 123 to go, first and 10 from the 25. And Matthews fires over the middle, and that's nearly intercepted at the eight-yard line by Greg Davis, who knocks it down with 114 remaining. Irish on top, 39 to 28. Man open and a diving deflection. Greg Davis. The catch is made, and getting out of bounds is Sullivan at the 13-yard line. That stops the clock with 1.06 left. Go back again to what we said at the very top, and Lou Holtz took over the defense. He really put himself on the line. He could have said somebody else was going to do it. He didn't. He was right up front with it. He said, I'm going to call the defenses. Knowing he was going to go against a great offensive team, he stayed with it. It was a great philosophy, and he's done a superb job. He's just eclipsed Spurrier's mark. On first down, the catch is made by Rhett, and he takes it to the five, but now the clock keeps on ticking. And it was interesting, Spurrier set that mark in a losing effort to Missouri back in 1967. So both top two numbers for passers have been in losing efforts. Second down and two at the five-yard line. Again, the Gators without a timeout. And he throws it away, and that stops the clock with 36 seconds remaining. Ooh, and what did he do? And Matthews holding his right wrist after his 56th 
pass of the night. He has set a, a Sugar Bowl record for most passing attempts. He has tied the Sugar Bowl record for most completions and set the record for most yards gained passing. You can see Jim Flanagan, number 44, came on the blitz, and his helmet hit Shane Matthews in the wrist with a hand, and that's what hurt. Third and two from the five. He lost it into the end zone, and it's picked off by Jeff Burris. And that will write a finish to this one. Blue Hall saying one more play, and that's all they have to run. That'll be another day for this youngster, Shane Matthews. And there will be many more for this man. Quite a tribute. Being paid to Lou Holt, the Rosenthal, the athletic director, and a big, big win for and you rarely and you rarely see Lou Holtz this emotional on the sideline after a football game. I, I think the smile and the unabashed emotion you're seeing right now by Lou Holtz again a reflection of how sweet this one is for the Irish. Meyer with a kneel down and that's going to do it. Highest scoring Sugar Bowl game in history. Look out, Lou! Oh! <laughs> oh. Munchkin of South Bend. He Boy. deserves a ride. Uh, Lou Holtz, he faces that sideline with the eye of an eagle. Pearson penetrating. Well, today's game, tonight's game, I think, is everything that's really nice about college football. Two good programs, two good schools. Schools graduate their players, and they played hard tonight. This was fun to be a part of. The Irish erase a 13-point deficit, a game dominated through the first quarter and a half by Florida. The only question seemed to be by what score would Florida win? And instead, at the end, it's Notre Dame by 11, and let's go to Tim Brown. Before the game, I called you the master of motivation. I've got to know, what did you tell them at halftime to come out like that? Uh, we just went back to Notre Dame football. We got a little bit more power on offense and on defense. We changed a few things, went to a nickel. But well, we just felt we had to play 60 minutes. They're an outstanding team. You know, I give them all the credit in the world, but we're happy to win. I, I, I could hardly wait to go back to that restaurant where the waiter said, Cheerios and Notre Dame the difference. Cheerios belong to the ball. I think we proved we belong here. Congratulations. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Hey, whatever uh, it takes to motivate. Yeah, I bet that waiter got a big tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheerios yeah. isn't too bad. Yeah. Notre Dame wins it by 11. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deerer. Happy New Year as we say goodnight from the Superdome in New Orleans.